All right, Jane, I'm recording when you're ready. All right. Well, let's call the meeting of the village board to get to order. Um, and I would ask Lou to note the roll call. So noted. All right. And I would ask Bill to lead us in the recitation of the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. You're too fast for me, Bill. Oh, okay. All right. Announcements, the village board will convene into closed session pursuant to section 19.851E of the Wisconsin statutes for purposes of deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public land funds or conducting other specified public business. Whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require closed session, negotiations of agreement with Cap Wynn relating to Meridian Drive and negotiation of development agreement with CF Investments Inc. tonight and section 19.851G of the Wisconsin statutes for purposes of conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or which it is or is likely to become involved tax assessment litigation Walgreens. All right. The consent agenda, approval of minutes of the regular board meeting of 316 2021. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. By Colleen. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is second by Abby. Any discussion, corrections, or edits? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Moving on, appearances before the board. A um, Couple of things before we start with appearances. We're going to move all appearances related to the um, Craig Frank Investments um, item it under, to under old business. So um, we have both the presentation and the public comments happening um, at the same time. It's a long ways, it's item seven and it was item 6.2. So we're just moving it down to old business. I am going to um, take appearances on the um, other items under section six, I'm gonna all appearances ask you to stick to three minutes. Um, we're going to have a lot of people who want to appear and we have a very long agenda tonight. So we're hoping that we may maintain um, careful timing of, of the appearances. We're also asking anyone that is attending the meeting and not speaking to please mute themselves. Um, we will try to catch it if you don't, but it's very disruptive to other people if you don't mute. Um, so at this point, when you when you do are asked to appear, I'd ask you to state your name and address for the record. Um, and we'll begin. The first appearance that we have tonight is Jeff Unger on the Veterans Park Monument. Jeff, are you here? I am, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, well, good evening, Madam President and trustees. Uh, thank you for allowing me to appear and present an unprecedented historical and permanent proposal for our village park system this evening. Uh, again, I am Jeff Younger, the president of DeForest Veterans Memorial Foundation Incorporated. I reside at 617 DeForest Street in DeForest. On behalf of our board of directors, I come before you this evening to request authority to proceed with the installation of our final military identification piece representing our United States Navy. For nearly two decades, now the DVMF has partnered with the Village of DeForest to implement the approved architectural design of a world-class, historically authentic and educational Veterans Memorial Park. Veterans Memorial Park is a place of contemplation, 
education, reflection, and remembrance. It does not interfere with the ever-present beauty of the environment or the functionality of the park, meeting our civic, cultural, and educational and environmental needs. Well, thank you, Declan. And uh, as you History said, helps us movie, learn how we got here and where we are going. It helps us understand and appreciate our successes and failures. It develops a sense of accomplishment and pride, and it becomes a permanent record of legacy of our United States Armed Forces. The vision of our Naval ID piece is an authentic scale model of the highly decorated Naval ship, battleship, I should say, USS Wisconsin, BB-64. It is planned to be a six foot model, similar to the F-16 already installed in the park. It'll be placed in a secure weatherproof encasement and accompanied by an educational tablet consistent with the remainder of the military ID pieces. It is our hope that this final military ID piece plan will execute upon arrival from its originating place, SD Model Makers of San Diego. Our planned installation and dedication is projected to be accomplished in three parts, the cement-based foundation, the monument amounting an assembly, and the uh, encasement, and the final piece would be the tablet installation. We hope to complete this all by Memorial Day of 2021. And just a quick plug, we are planning Memorial Day ceremonies for 2021 in the park, beginning, beginning at 1145. And our theme plan for this year is the 30th anniversary of Desert Storm. Those are the details of our planned edition. Your review, consideration, and approval will be sincerely appreciated. Thank you for your time and attention. I'm available for any questions. Are there any questions for Jeff? If not, do we want to take action on this here? Okay, I would entertain a motion to provide authority to um, Jeff and his organization to install the monument. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Al, can we do action under appearances, Al? Uh, I'm just looking at the agenda. No, you cannot. Just let oh. come, come back. That was my question earlier. So Sorry. where do we do that? Is this something that can't wait till the next meeting? Can you wait till the next minute meeting, Jeff? I can. He can. That would we'll be the an appropriate we'll way to handle it. Okay. All right. If there are no questions for Jeff, then we'll keep moving. Jeff, thank you. Pleasure. All right, moving on. Our, our next appearance um, is Jan Steffenhagen Hahn. Are you here, Jan? Yes, hello, I'm here. All this right. Is... <laughs> hello, uh, board. Uh, this is Jan Steffenhagen Hahn. I live at 805 Acre Parkway. And I am wanting to speak about the ordinance that you're creating, the section 3.118. Um, I wanted to first say that I like the idea of this um, being reviewed and being brought forward. I think it's a great idea because things have changed so much um, with the electric uh, vehicles, personal vehicles and, and so forth that we're seeing. Um, I do live on Western Green. And so I do see a lot every day. And um, like I said, I do like the fact that you're bringing this, this forward and, and taking a look at it. Um, I am not in opposition to the electric um, bikes um, because basically what I've seen is I, I see generally older people um, uh, using them and I, I see that they're not usually generally going that fast. Of course, I'm sure there's there's um, uh, times when that is not the case and, and there are others. Um, but the one thing about the ordinance that I did notice is that um, if we do make any changes to this to allow electric bikes and that sort of thing, um, there's nothing in here about minors. And I, I think that um, I, would like, I would like to see something about that. I mean, unless someone has a disability, of course, that's completely different. Okay, we'll note that. Um, Annette, that's basically all I have. Okay. 
And Jan, was it you that presented a picture? Yes. And, you know, I sent that picture. When I first read this um, uh, ordinance, I read through it quickly. And um, I didn't catch everything that was in there. And I thought that um, we were really going to allow a lot of uh, the motor vehicles not be opposed to them. And so that's why I sent that picture. So really, it's kind of irrelevant at this point. Did you find okay. it? All right. Oh, okay. Where you would expect to so, see it. I didn't see it. Is that, does anyone have questions for Jan? Okay, if not, oh, Abby, I'm sorry. Hi. Um, I'm sorry if I was unmuted when my husband was giving me the charging cord. Um, I uh, Just a question for a possible exception for minors. It, have you seen um, children using e-bikes on the trail and, and using them inappropriately or unsafely? Not that I know of, no. I have seen some um, skateboards back there and that sort of thing. And I, I'm not um, saying that um, I'm, I'm thinking about this from an irresponsible, meaning that kids are acting up or anything like that. By all means, I do not mean that. Um, you need to know, uh, I've been an insurance agent for 32 years. So what's ingrained in me and my mind is accidents. And of course, nothing, we can't live in a bubble and we're not gonna prevent anything from happening. But when it comes to minors, we all know that they just don't have the, the life skills and as the life lessons per se, as what an adult does. So some of these things that we're seeing can turn on a dime. We're starting to see, I see the hoverboards back there. And now these hoverboards, you can turn them into little like cars and um, those things turn on a dime. And I've seen uh, in past, this past weekend, a seven-year-old operating one. And, you know, it's the thing that anyone could take a quick turn, right? And have a bicycle person could be coming through or a, a jogger and uh, be tripped up. Um, and that person and the child could be hurt or whoever could be hurt on this thing. But I think it's less likely to happen with an adult. And so that's why I'm saying, I, I think we've got to have some restrictions on minors because they just, they just um, don't have the knowledge that we have. And they haven't been through like a driving training class yet or anything like that. Not that these are roads back here, but they're gonna work similarly if we're gonna have fast moving things. And you know, some of these bikers that come through here, they're in great shape, they're, they're flying, you know? So we have all types of speeds back there. We have extremely slow and we have extreme and we have very fast. And so I just don't think that adding minors into the mix of the electronic stuff is a good idea. Thank you, Jan. Any other questions for Jan? If not, well, thank you for taking the time to come and share your thoughts with us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And the next person that registered was Gene Hader from 7730 Indigo Drive. He's not appearing, but registering opposed. All right, now we're moving to Sunnybrook Park discussion and we have um, Nicole Hotman from appearing. Nicole, are you with us? I am. All right. Oh, Madam President. Please, please go ahead. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Luann, for getting me the information as well today. And hello to Village Board and any other members. Um, I've appeared before the Village Board a couple of times in response to the Sunnybrook Park and the playground equipment. And unfortunately, my minority of opposing the playground equipment did not win. And I understand we will be having new playground equipment placed. I reside at 515 Riverside Drive and my entire backyard property line aligns the back of Sunnybrook Park. We have 150 feet that's complete, completely adjacent to the park. And one of the reasons that the neighbors on Riverside Drive were opposed to having the playground equipment be in place in Sunnybrook Park was one, because of the water and the overflow of the Ahar River, but also two, the reason why so many of us chose our property within the Sunnybrook subdivision is the maturity 
that we have here. Most of our homes are 20 to 30 years old. We have very large lots. We have a lot of large trees and it's quiet and private. Unfortunately, that too was broken about seven years ago when the Ahara River Trail was put in and that is also in my backyard. And as you all know, we see about 3000 individuals on this trail a day on our weekends. And now we're gonna have a playground um, placed in our backyard. And to me, the biggest point was this won't be a neighborhood park. This is going to be a transient park. Um, we're gonna have everybody who uses the Yahara Trail stopping and using this park. And I come before the board today. Um, I've been corresponding with Jane and Judd, um, as well as other village board members. And I am requesting um, an allowance because we will be putting up a privacy fence. Again, my backyard is no longer the Ahara River and these gorgeous, beautiful trees that we have. It will be a playground filled with kids and parents and everybody having fun. And I understand um, that that will be a great opportunity for the village and for, for our fellow residents. However, it's in my backyard. So I did move forward and I have um, gotten two local estimates for a six foot privacy fence, as well as additional trees from Serbs trees to be planted in our backyard. Um, I did our due diligence and got multiple estimates for the fence. And so I come before the board today to ask for an allowance. Um, of course, PVC vinyl fences that we had quotes over $10,000. Um, I'm not asking for that. We are asking just for a privacy wood fence. And both quotes came in at 7,500 and the other one came in at 7,510. We additionally are gonna be putting in over $2,000 worth of trees, but I'm not asking for allowance on that, but I am asking for an allowance for the privacy fence as now I'm gonna be looking out my backyard to a playground. And so I come before the village board today to kindly ask, because this will dramatically affect our property, the value of our home, will the board please consider a $7,500 allowance to cover the privacy fence that we will be placing in our backyard. And thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Nicole. Are there questions for Nicole? Um, I have some. Abby. Or actually, I think just one question. Um, thanks for speaking. And I was just, uh, I couldn't quite remember from being on the trail, you know, what, what the view is towards your house. And I've never really specifically looked at your house. but um, So I went on Google Maps and that provides a satellite view, but I don't know how old it is. Um, so just to, from, from my understanding, um, so Google Maps is showing some trees um, in your backyard that kind of separate from your yard and Sunnybrook Park. Are those trees still there? Mm -hmm. um, and if so, um, I guess how much cover, cover privacy do, does it offer? Yeah, so those trees are, are great. We do have two very large trees in our backyard, but they're deciduous. And so we have no coverage when we have no leaves on that. And when we first moved to this property, of course, everybody wants their trees to grow tall and big, not necessarily to grow out. So we always kept pruning our trees. So our trees are about 15 feet up and then they just canopy over. So we do have a couple large deciduous trees, but by no means does that create any sort of privacy barrier. And it's interesting too, because in the park, there's no trees along the property. There's only trees that go along like the marshland and then over to the trail. There's no trees in the playground area, but maybe that will change because I don't know exactly where the playground structure is going to be located. Okay. Greg, do you want to talk about where the playground structure will be located? Sure, Luke, can you get up the um, GIS by chance? And we can kind of point that out. Um, and I can kind of speak on probably why you don't have any trees 
like along your property line, there is a sanitary sewer line, uh, Madison Metropolitan Sewer um, line that goes through that tall grass right on the backside of your property line. Um, so they're, they won't plant any trees um, in that easement area. And is that tall grass that is going to remain? Is that correct? Yeah, um, I think it also serves, I don't know if it serves as a swale too. I guess I'm not sure why that's been tall grass, but I noticed that, I mean, it can probably stay. Thank you. Um, if you just go to the aerial, um, the four little dots in the top, yep. Then you'll see the um, pavilion there or the mm -hmm. gazebo. Mm -hmm. uh, the two trees that are um, just to the north of that gazebo, there's going to be a sidewalk coming out of that gazebo in between those two trees. And then the um, playground equipment will be right out um, from those trees. Yeah. Can, I, can, I believe can, I could look it up here really quickly. The size, I think it's like 50 by 50 area. Okay. Um, Which is Nicole's house? I am the third house. So I'm, I'm that house right there. That's my house. Yep. All right. Thank you, Greg. Are there other yeah. quest questions or, or comments for Nicole? Well, if not, I want to thank you for bringing this forward. We can't, we need to put this on an agenda for, for action. I, we can't act during appearances as, as I found out earlier. Um, so, we will add this to an agenda um, and then the board will be able to, to act on it. Um, okay. I did, I did find the size of that um, total area is 58 by 52 feet, so. Okay. The a area for the play equipment? Yep, yep, that's the whole border and everything, so. All right, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Yep. Thank you, Jane. I look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, everybody. All right, moving on. Um, I think those are all of the appearances that are not on the Craig Frank um, investment project. It, am I missing anyone? Is there anyone who wanted to appear on any other matter? There was just one other registered um, person in support for Ordinance 2021-006, a Jean, uh, Linda Muren of Windsor. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you for telling us. Did, did she want to appear or just register? Just register. Okay, great, thank you. All right, well then we will go to old business. Um, and we will, again, we're gonna start with presentations and then we will have appearances. We're going to, again, once we get to the appearances, require that people limit their comments to three minutes um, and um, be available for questions should staff or trustees have any questions for those appearing. Um, we're going to, start our presentation with Michelle and Steve. Um, and so we'll begin with Michelle Lowry and Steve Falgren. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I think it's appropriate that this is under old business this evening as we have been working with CF Investments since uh, late 2019 on this development. And you will recall seeing it in front of you a few times or at least one time um, and several conversations um, in public meetings about the development. Um, so we've been working through uh, with the developer in 2020 um, on this development. And I'm gonna share Google Earth really quickly just to orient everyone to where we are. 
I am going to pull this up. Okay, can everyone see my map at the beautiful athletic complex here? Yep. So we've got the uh, interstate here and we've got the athletic complex here. Here is where the development is looking to take place right here. So you can see um, this is part of our um, tax increment financing district number five. And this is an area which um, is very close to an investment that we've made in the athletic complex, as well as um, some investments that have been made by others, like the developers that are in the, in the uh, meeting tonight, the rings. And um, we uh, have a couple reasons why we're here tonight. And I'm gonna go ahead and share um, and agenda, and a, the resolution here just to go through with us and to say, you know, why are we here tonight and why really the question tonight is meriting public investment and what is the reason that this development would merit public investment. So I think the resolution spells it out pretty clearly. Um, promoting economic development in the Conservancy Place development area. It's going to be the uh, Texas Wrap building um, with some uh, 8,000 square feet of commercial space with uh, 125 uh, residential apartment units. It is consistent with the village's comprehensive plan and with the goals and objectives of the approved project plan for TID-5. We have uh, negotiated a tentative agreement with CF Investments for the guarantee of certain infrastructure improvements and tax base enhancements in exchange for TIF financial assistance to the proposed development in the form um, of the development agreement. And I'll talk a little bit about the tenants there. And so um, really staff is suggesting that we've determined that the terms and conditions of that agreement are reasonable and providing the incentives as provided therein um, will promote, promote additional development. And that is really one of the reasons, I'm gonna go through a couple of reasons, but really one of the reasons that we are uh, proposing this investment is the infrastructure. And I'll show you a couple of exhibits here this exhibit is going to show, this is another way of looking at uh, the area. You can see here, we've got uh, the interstate here. We've got the athletic complex here. This is Windsor Road. And then this is River Road. This development is going to cause more than $2.5 million in infrastructure investment in the area. So that is going straight there from um, this area down here to Windsor Road. So that will be caused by this development and the, uh, the development, uh, the landowner has agreed to put in that uh, infrastructure. This investment is, is, is this. So this investment is, it's a little over 2.5 and it's the north section, the south section and the east-west road. So that is um, one of the reasons. Another reason um, we wanted to talk about today is the bigger picture. And I'm gonna, again, um, go ahead and share this Google Earth image. This is not, you might ask yourself, why would the public investment need to be on a multifamily? And I've gotten that question myself. And really the question is the bigger picture. All of us in the community, and I'm, I'm the economic development director, community development director for those who might not be aware. And what I have been listening to is how much commercial, new commercial uh, development our residents want in DeForest. And one of the things that is pretty undisputable about development is that commercial follows rooftops. So providing another um, area here for residential, which is um, close to the freeway here, is going to in assist us in providing some of the information or some of the vision that we talked about last summer when we talked about tax increment financing. And we talked about what kind of the staff vision was for this area of amenities, things that would be ancillary to the athletic complex. So providing more residency in this area is going to help us to fulfill some of that vision. So the tenants of the agreement, and I'll stop sharing now so you can see the uh, tenants of the agreement would be the uh, in, uh, the uh, public investment would be just over 2.2 million for this investment, so less than the cost of the infrastructure investment that would be put in. Um, so wanted to note that, and really this is about um, 
the investment that it's going to make into the tax base. So we're talking about, and we're going to talk to the uh, developer here in a moment, but we're talking about an investment to the tax base on whole of $30 million. Um, in this agreement, we're mainly focusing on the residential building with the apartments and the 8,000 square feet of commercial, um, but there is much more to the proposal. And so that allowing that into the tax base will allow us to do many more things that we want to fulfill of that vision for TID 5. So I just wanted to kind of open it up and set the, the discussion and would love to open it up, Steve, if you have anything to add. I think that was very well said, Michelle. Uh, I, I think, and if the rings are on here, uh, it is difficult to sell land when it's not in its final state, really. And I think having that road in there uh, where it is going to be uh, ultimately uh, placed will help them sell lots. Uh, and I think the tax base creation that CF development will cause will uh, provide the village with some resources to attract additional commercial amenities uh, and economic stimulus for the area as well as the community. So Again, it's, it's the bigger picture. Um, I understand where individuals could be concerned about TIF for residential multifamily, um, but we aren't looking at it that specifically. We're looking at the bigger picture and getting these roads in. Uh, we've heard plenty of people concerned about transportation and the roads being too busy. Well, building this new road north-south should help out a lot of that. I would think a lot of the people that will be living in these apartment complexes, we'll use that north-south road rather than going east-west. Um, and it's a little bit slower through there, certainly the residential areas. So I think the, you know, the progress we're making out there is, uh, is assisting future development and transportation concerns. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Al, do you have anything you wanna add? Uh, the only thing that I would add is the is just to uh, kind of talk about the, the scope of what's on the agenda for tonight. Uh, we're talking about the approval, potential approval of the uh, TIF financing agreement. It's all conditioned on the development receiving the development approvals that are not on the agenda tonight. Those are matters that are, will be pending in front of the, the plan commission. There's still uh, a need for site plan approval, um, final development plan approval, and a certified survey map. Um, so those things are still pending. They're not before the board tonight. And uh, the TIF agreement obviously uh, assumes that those things um, will be handled and, and worked out at the planning commission level. Okay, thank you. With that, then I would ask um, Craig and Corey Frank to um, present their information. I'm not sure which of you are starting first, so. Hi, uh, uh, Craig Frank, uh, I'm here with Corey Frank, uh, representing CF Investments. And um, Corey will be uh, putting on our presentation. Um, but uh, just to um, give a, a little more input uh, as to, uh, from our perspective at least, uh, why we're here uh, requesting the TIF in. That would be that this is a unique product that uh, we are presenting here. Um, the mixed use building is something that is new to the area. Uh, very expensive to incorporate the parking structure that we have. Uh, but uh, as we've seen in one other location that uh, we have it, uh, it uh, makes a substantial difference in the tenant base that you have uh, the retention, uh, the income level uh, of tenants uh, in that given complex. And the reason why I bring that up is that uh, we've been finding out uh, that uh, the tenant base that that building attracts uh, does have substantially more income than your standard uh, tenant um, uh, uh, base that you would have uh, in, a, in, a, in a traditional apartment complex. Um, so that's one element of the mixed use building, but uh, Corey will get into a little here too, as far as uh, the condominiums, which uh, we feel um, are also unique and very beneficial to the community. 
Uh, so just wanted to bring up a couple elements uh, that um, were touched on, but uh, wanted to just uh, reiterate a few items there. Um, so uh, without uh, uh, further ado, I'll uh, put Corey on here to go through the uh, proposal. Corey Frank with uh, CF Investments. Um, can uh, everyone see the uh, screen share here? All right. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to keep it uh, uh, quick and to the point with all the items on the agenda here today. And um, most of you have already seen this presentation, um, but just uh, the recap, we'll go through a quick overview of our uh, development proposal here. So uh, start out uh, some background on CF Investments. Uh, based out of McFarland, CF Investments has been in real estate since 1985. Uh, with a current focus uh, on uh, pursuing redevelopment opportunities, uh, residential mixed use projects and la land development with over $20 million in projects that are completed or currently under construction. Uh, this proposal as uh, uh, Michelle mentioned is uh, over $30 million in value and uh, added uh, tax base to the uh, uh, to the forest. Um, here we have a few recent projects from the last couple of years um, uh, in locations such as McFarland, Sun Prairie, Cottage Row, east side of Madison. Uh, overview of the uh, project. Um, so CF Investments has interest in proposing four-story mixed-use building consisting of the 8,000 square feet of commercial frontage and 125 multifamily units that uh, Michelle mentioned earlier. Uh, the building to have an interior structured parking ramp to minimize the need for surface parking. Uh, in addition to the mixed use building, we intend to have uh, uh, oh, a total of uh, 69 condominium units. Um, parking required for the development, which is always a, a, a big item, is uh, 336 parking stalls. Uh, parking provided is 435, which is near 100 stalls beyond the uh, requirements. Um, and as mentioned, total value and added to tax base would be over $30 million. And um, we'll go over a, a quick timeline here. As, as Michelle mentioned, uh, this has been in the works since uh, December 2019, when we had uh, initial discussions with village staff on site selection. Uh, fast forward to June 2020, uh, we had our concept presentation to the village board. Uh, ensuing that was the initial resident petition and first comments. Uh, August 4, 2020, uh, the village board presentation by village staff discussing how TIF works and conservancy place zoning and how they apply to our conceptual proposal. Um, this, we feel, answered a lot of uh, misconceptions that the neighborhood initially had. Um, the day after that, uh, we met uh, again with the village to address neighborhood concerns, as well as uh, working to finalize a conceptual proposal. From that point until now, um, almost another year, uh, there have been uh, continuous meetings and revising to get, the, uh, get to the current refined plan. March 4th of uh, this year was our neighborhood meeting in which we responded to uh, concerns generated by the initial concept plan um, that has since changed and uh, have had minimal opposition since the meeting. Um, March 23rd was then the concept presentation to planning and zoning. Uh, majority of the plan commission was generally positive uh, with a few uh, uh, items of note that uh, changes have been made since. Uh, for some slight improvements. And, uh, here we have the uh, most up-to-date site plan. Uh, so as you can see here, it's at the uh, northeast corner of Innovation Drive and Conservancy Way. This is lots three through five of Innovation Springs. Uh, you see the mixed use building uh, to the west. Uh, moving on over, you have the condominiums two 10-unit townhomes with underground parking, a 27-unit garden style with elevator and underground parking, and uh, two six units with uh, two-car garages and finished basements. Um, the item that uh, has since changed since the last plan commission uh, meeting was uh, uh, addressing uh, 
suggestion to uh, from both the neighborhood and staff to move these uh, six unit buildings up closer to the property line uh, to have more of a, uh, a frontage look. Uh, the decks were turned into stoops uh, with front doors and sidewalks were then added uh, uh, going to the village sidewalk. And we'll just touch on these quickly. So these are just some concept plans for some of the outdoor areas. Uh, these would be some photos of uh, similar areas for the entry plaza, which you see highlighted in red at the top left here. Uh, these are just concepts and uh, we're, we're um, still working through exactly what makes sense to put at the entry plaza, but uh, open to village suggestions and uh, definitely wanna make it a uh, focal point and uh, a nice look for the neighborhood. And here we have the uh, commercial retail area. Uh, one of the changes made in the last couple months was uh, uh, pushing the parking lot further away from the commercial space to allow for more of a uh, walk-up uh, commercial space to allow for seating for commercial users and a, a more, more walkable and uh, enjoyable uh, commercial frontage. Um, and here are some uh, examples of similar projects that have that added sidewalk space in front of the uh, commercial facade. The uh, outdoor amenity highlight in red here uh, this is where we'll have, uh, and a lot of times we wait to wait to see demand of the, the tenants and condo owners, um, but uh, this is generally where you have a gazebo, fire pits, grills, and uh, uh, potential uh, um, dog area. Jumping to renderings here. Uh, so this would be from the southeast corner. Uh, to the west, you see the mixed use building the two, 10 unit uh, townhome condominiums uh, fronting the street. These townhomes here, which uh, have since been changed that you saw in the site plan, they're now moved closer to the street with more of a uh, frontage look um, that uh, was suggested uh, by uh, village staff. And then here we have a view directly from the east. You can see ABS to the right and uh, uh, tender reflections to the left. Here's a view straight on from the south. Uh, the building to the south here is the tender reflections building. Um, and um, you see the mixed use and condominiums to the north. Here are some ground level views. Uh, top left would be a rendering of uh, commercial frontage. Um, bottom left is the uh, garden style condo with elevator. And then the top right would be uh, a street view of the six units, which uh, again, it's since changed since these uh, renderings here. I will get in a little more detail uh, uh, on the Texas wrap architecture benefits. Uh, so as you can see from the photo, there's a internal structure parking ramp that results in more open space by reducing the surface parking requirements for the project. Uh, this allows for two plus stalls per unit within the building, um, not counting the surface parking. Uh, covered parking available for commercial space employees. Uh, positive impact on stormwater management by reducing impervious parking services. And it also minimizes the unsightliness of exterior surface parking and vehicles. Uh, building amenities, uh, the building also has a large rooftop amenity on the top level of the parking ramp, uh, 14,000 plus square feet with patio, tables, sports courts and grills. Um, also has a indoor lobby, office, fitness center and lounge. Uh, sustainability, construction will be supervised by an energy consultant and will be Energy Star certified. Uh, the building will use the most advanced heat pump technology, creating and cooling. Uh, which is a Mitsubishi electric product, which is the most efficient system available for a building like this, and also allows for no unsightly exterior build, grills on the building that you typically see with a, a traditional style apartment. Um, High-end interior finishes, uh, wood laminate floors, quartz countertops, stainless steel appliances, quality cabinetry, uh, solid core doors and uh, large windows and patio doors with private decks for each unit. Uh, benefits versus a typical apartment, which we already touched on some, 
Uh, the, the biggest thing is the ease of access. Tenants have the ability to park on the same floor as their unit, making the trip from vehicle to apartment as seamless as possible. Uh, building has an elevator, but ten tenants rarely have a need to use it, except for going up to the fourth floor amenities. Uh, two plus covered parking stalls per unit versus the typical uh, covered parking stall per unit ratio is around one for a standard uh, garden style apartment with underground parking. Uh, reduced need for surface parking allows for more green space. Um, excess space in the parking allows for uh, storage units for rent for tenants uh, in sizes you don't typically see. Uh, the large rooftop amenity. Uh, another key item is uh, uh, the building has 11 different unit types, including two-story townhomes as well. Uh, with that, the building offers many more price points and options than typical apartment complex. Um, and again, the uh, high efficiency HVAC system. Uh, the affordable condominiums. Um, so this is uh, the other component of the project that we're excited to introduce to the area. Um, so the condo mix is two 10 unit townhomes with underground parking, 27 unit three story garden style with underground parking and elevator, and then the two six units with two car garages. Uh, the above mix will provide options for a wide range of lifestyle and demographics, square footage ranging from 740 to 1550 square feet, uh, all the way from one to uh, three bedroom units available with prices starting around 160 for the one bedrooms on up from there. Uh, this will offer to forest residents with a new construction option and a price point that isn't currently available in the area. Uh, to touch on the 10 unit condos a little further. So these are townhome style with heat underground parking and private entry stairs for each unit. Uh, so these are a very private entry, private option. Um, high end finishes again, mix of two, two plus 10 and three bedroom units with prices starting at 220 range. Um, recently built with great success in um, a few other locations in the Madison area. The 27 unit condo building, uh, we're, we're very excited uh, about. Uh, this will offer uh, a uh, new construction ownership option that's not currently available in all Dane County. Um, the target market of this building will be empty nesters looking to downsize and preferring accessibility without stairs. It'll be a three story garden style with elevator. Uh, so single, single floor units versus the townhome with stairs. Uh, heat underground parking with 30 stalls underground and an additional 33 surface parking spaces. spaces. High end finishes and a wide mix of uh, units from one to three bedroom, uh, six different layouts and price points within the building uh, with prices starting around that 160 range for the uh, one bedroom uh, garden style units. So the affordable condominium aspect, we feel will fill a large void in the current deforest housing market. Um, recent DeForest Windsor housing supply and demand study shows considerable gap in housing in these ranges for seniors and the local workforce, including teachers and public safety personnel. Uh, there's not been affordable new construction options in years. And uh, the current lo lowest price new construction options on the market in DeForest, um, these numbers were taken from a few weeks back. Um, and I believe they've actually jumped up significantly since then. Uh, when I was just doing some quick searching today with how the market is. Um, condos, 332, uh, single family uh, in the 400,000 range for the uh, uh, starting prices. Our proposed condos with them uh, offering more of a, a multifamily option for condos. Um, prices range from 160 to the 300,000 range with multiple different building types, layouts, and uh, uh, sizes to choose from. Yeah, housing mix and density. Um, original vision of Conservancy Place was to enable a variety of housing options and a full spectrum of prices, styles, and types. Uh, taken from the 2003 PDP, I uh, went on to say by expanding the range of housing in the community, the development will strengthen its diversity and add neighborhood character. Higher density living options offer flexibility to create additional open space areas that foster community interaction and provide residential densities required to support retail services within the town center marketplace. 
Uh, Conservancy Place, if you're not aware, has been approved for up to 711 attached housing units, including condominiums and apartments, which will provide homes for enough people to support future commercial development. So far, uh, only eight rental units have been built in the Conservancy Place area, um, which we feel there is a, a very large need for. Uh, as stated by the Conservancy Place developers in their support letter, this project is consistent with the current zoning and hits the vision and goals for Conservancy Place. And is perfectly situated along a major artery within Conservancy Place that was designed for projects just like this. Uh, traffic is always an item of question. Um, and um, with the existing and planned road network within, the adjacent, within and adjacent to Conservancy Place, uh, it's been designed for to accommodate substantially more development and traffic per land area than this project will generate. Uh, in general, multifamily produces much less traffic per unit than a single family development and significantly less than most commercial uses. Um, structured parking will also allow for the traffic to be much more consolidated and organized within the site versus traditional uses. Uh, and then the surplus of stalls will also uh, minimize the need for street parking, which could be a concern with other uses with the sports complex nearby. Uh, if this project's approved, Conservancy Way will be approved to the north to River Road and the south to Windsor Road, further reducing any traffic concerns. Uh, need for residential use, um, as uh, uh, Michelle mentioned, uh, Conservancy Place has struggled to attract commercial users for year years and every successful commercial based neighborhood needs a catalyst and we feel there's none better than uh, uh, this proposal for this given location. Uh, the project is providing several options that aren't currently available as discussed. The tenant and condo owner base for this proposal bring added disposable income base that is highly attractive to businesses. In addition, the project offers quality affordable housing that employees desire and is needed to attract larger businesses to the area. The mixed use building will be a cutting edge luxury rental option that is more affordable than the comparable options located in areas such as downtown Madison. Uh, this will attract residents to the community that may not have otherwise considered the area. And um, in conclusion here, we feel this project is uh, uh, very consistent with village discussions related to these sites. The proposal maximizes the given site to its highest and best use by giving commercial frontage, addressing a demand for apartments in the area, and offering amenities that will attract high income tenants and businesses that may not normally be residing in more densely populated areas. This tenant base, of course, has more expendable income to support local businesses. Um, in addition, it's very attractive to new businesses that require housing products such as this to recruit employees. And um, a very key item uh, uh, is housing as a revenue builder for the forest by increasing the number of households and housing types that place few demands on public services while greatly increasing the tax base for the area. Uh, approval of this project will also allow for a much needed street connection from River Road to Windsor Road, um, as shown on the uh, PDF uh, by Michelle uh, earlier. This developer funded improvement expense is approximately two and a half million. Uh, this improvement along with our project will sp spur future business and economic growth. And furthermore, we agree with the Conservancy Place developers that this project hits the vision and goals of uh, Conservancy Place. And um, with that, I'll, I'll pass it back to uh, um, staff here. Thank you, Corey. A lot of information. I would like to begin with um, any trustee questions for Corey or Craig or Michelle or Steve. Abby, I see you. Uh, thanks. I okay. I have quite a few questions. Um, let's see. Which one should I start with? Um, so okay. So first one for Michelle. You briefly showed uh, earlier a screen referencing North 
I, I don't know, I can't even remember. It was just north, south, west to east. Would would you be able to have that slide come up and and um, explain it further? I, I, I don't think I quite caught it. Sure. I made um, some references to, oh, I'm not sharing, am I? Hold on a second. Are you talking about where the project is located, Abby? Um, it was it was a slide that um, the infrastructure. Oh, yeah, I think it. Yeah, that sounds right. Do you see what I'm looking at right now? The um, infrastructure that talks about what's going to be made here, mm -hmm. right here, and here. So that's what I'm I'm referring to. And it's um, got a uh, estimated cost of about a little over two point five million. Okay. And that's roughly the same amount as the as part of the development plan that we might possibly approve later today. Yes, it's a little bit less the the plan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see, does this? I'm not sure who who should answer this, but. Does this project um, or the apartments, where do they roughly start at with, with how they would rent out? As far as uh, uh, rent amounts? Yeah. Uh, so it'll more than likely be starting in the uh, uh, 1095 range for studios uh, and then uh, go up from there. Um, so there's, 11 different layouts. Um, so you got the traditional studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom flats. And then there are uh, several two-story townhome options as well, which uh, are uh, higher square footage and um, offer a, uh, another option beyond that. Okay. And so I can uh, see the need for the condos and I appreciate those uh, affordable starting points. Do you see the rental units uh, filling a particular housing need into forest at all? Like with current residents or current people that work here? Yeah, we, we've, we've of course done, done a lot of research on the DeForest area and is why, why we've been uh, uh, working on this for so long. Um, we, we definitely feel that there's a, a need and uh, in specific in uh, the Conservancy Place neighborhood uh, we think that it's a, a perfect fit uh, uh, for the future visions for the uh, area there. Okay, it, like, I guess I what I was wondering is, is, are these apartments affordable enough that current workers in DeForest would, you know, who maybe currently live outside of DeForest might be tempted to live there and be able to afford those apartments? Oh, yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what we see as the primary uh, uh, target market for uh, these apartments. Uh, uh, we feel very confident in the, the need for the area. Okay. Michelle, you were shaking your head too, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I was nodding, uh, just saying that uh, Trustee Lowry, we had um, had the round table that I talked to you about with some businesses that were here and really looking and saying, yes, they have employees that want to live here um, that would like to rent um, that are not able to do so. And much like, you know, other apartments that have been built in the area, um, they filled up pretty fast. So we expect this to this to do the same um, with those and, and with people who are interested in moving to DeForest, as they said, you know, maybe hadn't considered it before, but would like to move to DeForest as well. So we think that it'll fit fit kind of both markets. Are, do you know if our current um, businesses, are they aware of this development a proposal? And if they are, have they shared comments with you that like of this particular proposal? And we had generally, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry, we had generally talked about that this development was, was in the works um, and that the real issue was a diverse mix of housing that this will bring to the area that there is currently is not. So I think their slides were pretty effective on some of the condos that they might be interested in, in that purchasing too. So they're not just interesting and interested in renting, but in purchasing as well, and really just looking for different options. Okay. Um, and this is probably more of a developer question. Do you see like when you know, if this goes forward and construction, active construction is going on, do you see any um, 
this might be part of my uh, lack of background in construction, but will there be any disruption for people traveling on innovation? Uh, that road so there? actually, uh, that's that's a good point there. And one major aspect uh, uh, that is a, uh, a major benefit of this style building. So the parking ramp, the four-story parking ramp that sits in the middle of the mixed-use building, that is actually the first item that gets constructed. It's, it's the per first part of the uh, uh, process uh, um, after site work and before framing. So typically, um, the parking ramp gets completed very early in the process. And with that, there's over 240 parking stalls in the building. Uh, so what that allows us to do is start having uh, uh, contractors park inside the parking ramp that are working on site versus uh, a typical construction site where the entire process, it's uh, uh, street parking until then. Um, so that's, I mean, it's, there's definitely always going to be some um, parking on the street, um, but uh, it's not all vehicles can fit in a parking ramp for one. Um, but once that parking ramp is uh, uh, constructed, which is early on, it uh, definitely helps big time as compared to any other construction. Um, let's see. And if any other trustees want to jump in, like, yeah, why don't we let some others ask questions, Cor or Abby, and then because we got to move to appearances yet. These are good questions. Abby has expressed an interest, Corey, in seeing one of your projects. So you know, I know that that any anybody who wants to to tour can contact Corey or Craig and they'll make arrangements for that to happen. Yeah. All right, any other trustees have questions? I just wanted a point of clarification. I didn't catch the, um, the dollar amount for the rental apartment. I heard the, the latter part of it, but I just didn't catch all of it. Uh, so the, the rentals are starting at uh, 1095. Thank and they you. go up from from there based on number of bedrooms. I know we toured. Yeah, in square footage. Yeah. Yeah, so, we toured yeah, one that was nine. Really, there's nine nine different prices uh, um, within the building, so a lot of, a lot of options. Thank you. Any any other questions? If if not, oh, I see Jason waving his hand back in the. Thank you. Hey, um, two two things. One, you're going to need to bring me up to speed on the technology of heat pumps. It looks like all these units are going to be piped with heat pumps, and I'm old school. Um, anything under 25 degrees, you kind of raise your eyebrows a little bit. So tell me more on that. And then secondly, um, I know there was a little bit of discussion on the facades of the units, uh, and I know, I mean, Given conservancy, the only thing we hear over and over again is more natural stone. They love brick. Um, so I just, I'm curious on the renderings if you've made any changes to what's going to be looking at everybody's street side. Right. Let's briefly oh. answer those. And then remember some of what we're doing tonight or what we're doing tonight is focused on the development agreement and planning and zoning will have um, other opportunities to meet on some of the other elements of the project as it goes forward, um, CSM site plan, you know, design those sorts of things. All right, um, so I'll touch on that quickly. So the mixed use building has brick, the entire first floor uh, going all the way around the building. Uh, the rest is a, is a hardy plank, um, uh, side, high end siding, mix of lap and, uh, a uh, flat panel, uh, the uh, uh, condo buildings, the, the two 10 units and the two six units, uh, those have uh, cultured stone up to the bottom of the window line and uh, the rest of the material will be, uh, uh, again, that uh, hardy siding. Uh, the garden style building will be uh, back to the style of the mixed use with brick, the entire first floor, and then a mix of lap and uh, flat panel hardy siding. Um, and then to answer your question on the um, on the uh, HVAC system, uh, so um, you could uh, Google search uh, Mitsubishi Electric um, Ductless Mini Split System. 
Um, so basically it's, it's not one big heat pump system for the building. Each unit is separate. So in each bedroom and living room, you have the uh, Mitsubishi unit that sits up on the wall, all electric and uh, highest efficiency option out there, provides heating, cooling, built-in dehumidifier, and uh, each one of those units. So say you have a two bedroom unit, there's one in each bedroom and one in the living room. So there's three of the uh, Mitsubishi head units. Each one has a line set that then runs to our condenser unit, which is hanging in the parking garage and uh, un un um, not visible from the exterior. Um, so you don't have the traditional um, magic pack furnaces where you have a, a room boxed out in your bedroom with the uh, uh, magic pack up against the exterior with the unsightly exterior, big exterior grill that you typically see on apartments. So that's one benefit. And then beyond that, it's supposed to be the uh, most efficiency option, big uh, utility savings for tenants um, and uh, uh, good long-term sustainability. Thank you. Jason, did you have any other questions? No, thank you very much. Okay, all right. Well, with that, if there are no other questions from the trustees, I'd like to open it up to appearances. Um, again, I wanna note um, that we will we will try to keep it to, to three minutes and, and try, try hard not to be repetitive. Um, so, Again, please identify yourself and your address when you, um, when you speak. And um, we will then after you speak, ask trustees if they have questions for you. Um, we'd like to begin with Abe Degnan. Abe, are you here? I would like to hold my comments until after Lisa Stripe has had a chance. Um, may I follow her, please? Sure. John Drury. Hi, this is actually Lisa Drury. Um, John and I own Conservancy Apartments together, um, which is adjacent, the property adjacent to this development. Um, we're pleased to see the redesign that was presented tonight um, of the six unit next to our townhomes, um, bringing, their, bringing them more in line with Conservancy Place aesthetics and the vision with the front facing the street. Um, so thank you for that. Um, not sure we necessarily agree with the TIF interpretation, but um, I understand the staff write-up and um, have to defer to the board, the board on that. Um, I guess only one other comment was, um, I'm not sure we kind of are talking out of both sides of our mouths when we say that the people who will move in um, have income levels on the higher end or you know, attractive income levels for the commercial, and yet we're also talking about affordable housing. But if we have a thousand ninety-five in rent for a studio, who is that affordable for? Uh, because affordable housing is typically based on um, uh, your wages and ability to pay. Um, so that was just that's a. A thought I'm throwing out there, but um, again, we're happy to see the redesign. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, and Michelle, do you want to just talk for one minute about the definition of uh, regarding affordable housing? And I do, housing? and that's a good point. Thank you, Jane, and thank you, uh, Lisa, as well. Um, this is not technically affor affordable when we talk about affordable housing and, and what Lisa was talking about, about having to meet certain income requirements and things like that. Um, this is this is market rate, so this is all market rate, um, but it's really offering another option. Now, you might think in the multifamily that the apartments seem high, 
Um, but really that is market rate. And I'm sure that Corey and Craig could talk to that. That is what um, they are going for in this area for those amenities that, that um, we want in the community and for as nice as we want the facility to be. Um, and maybe Corey too, it's at some point, um, I'm sure we're gonna go forward with appearances, but I think that um, we can all agree that that is a certainly a different option on the condos and what is um, being offered at that price that there's still quality um, development, but are offered at a lower price. So while not technically, it's not affordable housing, but it is in the range of, of, of different availabilities and different types that are available is what I would say. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions for Lisa? If not, we'll move on to Lisa Street. Good evening. Thank you for having me, Lisa Streit, and I live at 4624 Mist Flower Court in DeForest, Wisconsin. And what I'd like to speak to tonight is um, my investment in the community vision and plan uh, for DeForest and Conservancy Place. And I'd like to speak a little bit about that DeForest uh, comprehensive plan, which is actively published on vi.deforest.wisconsin.us. So for anyone following along on my um, commentary, I'll be quoting and um, expressing concerns uh, directly from material available right from uh, that website. So as I get started, um, gracious thanks for having me um, and hearing uh, my concerns this evening. I appreciate the board very much for this opportunity. So beginning with a review of Village of DeForest Chapter 13 Subdivision and Development Plan, see page two, chapter one. Article 2, subchapter 1 deals with general provisions, purpose, and intent. Intent is the general intent of this chapter is to regulate the division of land to lessen congestion to the streets and highways and, and provide um, se and secure and safe uh, uh, situations. So as you know, um, you know, there's been some concentration concerns. And um, further, as you move through that document, page 12, section 13.08 does deal with traffic impact analysis. And to my awareness, I have not seen yet where a traffic engineer or the uh, project managers have developed a traffic impact analysis. And uh, there have been many, many concerns from the residents of Conservancy with regards to traffic, safety, and so forth, with regards to uh, the, the community and uh, innovation specifically. As you move to the actual comprehensive plan, which is an over 100 page document, uh, still currently actively published on the website, chapter five deals with housing and neighborhoods, um, page 51. The goal is to support high quality homes, safe, quiet and attractive neighborhoods. Further, there's commentary about support, supporting owner occupancy housing, emphasis on predominantly single family neighborhoods that doesn't overburden village or school district. There's also commentary with regards to promoting neighborhoods that preserve and celebrate natural assets oriented towards pedestrians and children's for children. Further, page 52 initiatives achieve a housing mix that emphasizes single family housing, increasing the amount and percentage of executive or real estate sized and styled single family housing. And they will pursue approaches, including the following, requiring family, uh, single family units comprising a minimum of 75% of all new housing units within each planned neighborhood. Uh, furthermore, um, there is commentary uh, out there on the village website that's, that uh, developers uh, of approved neighborhoods such as a quote, conservancy place and heritage gardens to increase the percentages of single family units there. Bottom of page uh, 52 and one, uh, 117 is where I found, uh, 52 of 117 is where I found some of that commentary. And um, Lisa, you can you wrap it up in one minute, please? You're over. Already, wow, okay. Well, basically, if you go to the maps, um, page 62 of the city plan, that whole segment is designated as office and research park. And that is uh, kind of the vision and plan, uh, single family homes and uh, that plan that's uh, actively published, what many homeowners are, are, are basing their uh, investment in DeForest and community uh, with regards to this plan. I would uh, also comment that I would invite anybody uh, who's on this call to look up the definition of misrepresentation. I believe there's a legal risk here with regards to what's act actively published to attract homeowners and property owners to this area. 
there are several case studies out there uh, with regards to um, these types of large apartment complexes and single family homes. Apologies for uh, speaking so quickly. I have more to, to speak to, but I believe my time is up and thank you for listening. Thank you, Lisa. Are there any questions for Lisa? If not, Abe. Okay, Abe Degnan, 6846 Conservancy Plaza. Because of these time limits, I will also be speaking very quickly. Uh, there is a lot to say here, and this is of the utmost importance um, to the residents of this village. I would like to challenge um, the thing that the developer uh, of this project said that there has been minimal um, uh, opposition. I would challenge anyone to show uh, anyone in support of this project who is not a part of the village staff, the village board, et cetera, or the, there's, there's been nothing but opposition from the residents of this neighborhood and the citizens of the village of DeForest. I challenge that assertion. Um, second of all, um, the TIF funding. You guys are taking a vote on TIF funding tonight. Um, if I remember right, as you guys know, I was a member of the village board. Now, I don't have access to this right now, and I only found out about this this afternoon uh, about the TIF funding and in this presentation right now that the TIF funding is being justified by River Road. But I believe if you go back to the original developers agreement, you will see that the developers of Conservancy Place are responsible for the for realignment of River Road at their expense. And that does not belong on the backs of the taxpayers of the Village of the Forest through our taxes or through the indirect funding via TIF district. It is completely inappropriate. Now, when we take into account the 8,000 square feet of commercial divided by 2.25, 2.225 million dollars, that is $278 per square foot going uh, in TIF funding to that. That in my best ballpark is twice the white box cost that the developer is putting into that. There is no justification for TIF funding for the minimal amount of of, of commercial square footage. If this project is good, it should stand on its own. Residential development does not deserve TIF funding. Residential development can subsidize TIF funding, but it does not deserve to get TIF funding, nor does 8,000 square feet in a mixed use building where the residential sub should subsidize the commercial property until the commercial property stabilizes in and of itself. This is of the utmost importance. Now, the next thing to understand here is going back to the comprehensive plan. As Lisa pointed out, the comprehensive plan for this area shows it as agriculture um, agriculture tech park. It does not show it as um, in the comprehensive plan. Uh, it is inconsistent with the comprehensive plan. The, the whole purpose of a comprehensive plan is for there to be consistency between the proposed land use and the developer coming in so that you have something to judge this by. There is something to judge this by and that is the comprehensive plan which tells us that there is a different proposed land use envisioned for there, uh, and this is not consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, the the um, it, this is the and finally this is inconsistent with the neighborhood with the way that the neighborhood has developed the images that were shown in the original um, preliminary development plan showing what these different types of housing were never showed four story buildings never showed anything like this the developer has made decisions um, in 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 changing the mixture of single family and multifamily building the intent, the legislative intent of, of the number of units in here was a compromise because we allowed more multifamily units than what the village um, goal was. And the compromise was that achieving a minimum of 70% home ownership in this neighborhood would be an acceptable compromise given the number of multifamily units they wanted. Now, Yes, there's only eight rental units in there so far, but the whole thing is what is going to happen now with 140 some uh, uh, or 125, whatever the number is, do the math, let's find out. If it is okay, show us that it's okay. Show us that it meets the 70-30 ratio. Do not fund the TIF. You're muted, Jane. 
think I figured that out by now. I'm sorry. Um, I'm thank animated because I have to speak fast. I apologize for that. We, we understand. Um, are there any questions for Abe? Thank you. Moving on, Nicholas Street. Hello, uh, my mother said I had a face for radio, so I'll just, uh, I won't put the camera on. Um, thank you very much, first of all, for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, tonight. Uh, approximately 10 years ago, I reached out to Joe Ring and said I wanted to build a house in Conservancy Place, and I asked him about the Knolls. He said that's a long way off, but River's Turn, we are changing our thinking. We are going to have a lot of multifamily, and now we're more single-family oriented. The corridor along Innovation Drive is going to be single family. So there's been a change of vision for the neighborhood. And so we built on Miss Flower. Um, and I do feel a little bit misled by uh, Joe because certainly it seems like he's reverted back to his original vision of multifamily. The thing is, nobody told Parktown that they had to put single family homes in. The city didn't have to prove that, it was a voluntary thing. But now people do live on Innovation Drive. And this village is obligated to look out for their best interests. It's a safety factor. That road is already somewhat dangerous with the trail crossing and a high density apartment complex is not gonna help that. Now we can speculate that people will go, you know, off river road, um, but there's no guarantee that they won't. In fact, you could have a heavier traffic than you anticipate. And once it's in, you can't undo that. Um, I listened to most of the presentations, including the recent one that Craig and Corey did to the city or to the village the residents, and they said that they addressed a lot of concerns, and they did address most of them, but the four-story large high-density apartment building they did not address, and that to me is the big issue. It's too much traffic, too high density. It does not fit in with the neighborhood. This would be a beautiful development off of 51, off of 19, off of V, on East Washington Avenue, but it's in the middle of a residential area and it shares, this is the key thing, it shares an egress road with single family homes, a park and a trail. If you look at Cottage Grove, if you look at the Token Creek apartment complexes, they're all separate from neighborhoods. You can get out of your apartment and get on a main drag without having to pass any homes, without creating any safety issues. This project is being put right in the middle of a single family home, basically uh, development, and it has to share innovation drive. I think it's a beautiful project. If I was 24 and I lived in Madison, I would be happy to rent from these guys. It's just the location. There were 712 people who signed the change.org petition that they don't want this. I don't know a single conservancy place resident who wants this. Anybody who lives here is either um, indifferent typically, or most common, they don't like the idea. And I've heard comments of, it's a money thing, the village wants it, the fix is in, they don't care about the residents. And unfortunately, when I hear the discussion tonight, the money is the big thing and the residents and our needs seem to be not quite as important. So to summarize, it's the size, it's the density, it's the location, it's the traffic, it's the safety. Uh, at the last uh, presentation that the Franks did, Craig said, well, it's not the largest structure. There's some structures behind us that are larger. And he was referring to the silos. Then he made a comment that there's plans to put a hotel in. I don't know where this is all coming from, but that is this is really not the neighborhood for a hotel in a four-story apartment complex. There's Thank plenty you, of other Nick. places in the forest we could put those. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Any questions for Nick? All right, moving on. We had uh, Chip Van Meter um, registering a post but not appearing. And Tom Finneger, Finnegan, who does not have an address, he says, not appearing and opposed. Um, so I think those are the people who have registered to speak. Um, are there any other appearances? Okay. With that um, discussion of the um, uh, development agreement will, will be taken up later on. 
And I don't think that there's any more action needed here. Al, Steve, cue me in. We're good. Yeah. All right. I think you're and ready I for do... your next agenda item. Say again, Al. I think you're ready for your next agenda item. Thank you. I did want to say, though, I received calls from people today, and I apologize. I was in back-to-back -back meeting. And if anybody else still wants to speak to me, um, give me a call or shoot me an email, and we'll set a time. I just was not able to take every call that came in today, and I wasn't ignoring anyone. I just truly didn't have the time. Um, the next item is discussion and action to continue to meet virtually for village meetings and return to in-person meetings. Um, and this is a discussion with the whole village board. Um, I want to open it up for discussion. We have um, been meeting virtually for quite a while now. Um, and, and I'd like to hear from board members on their thoughts about um, coming back to Village Hall to hold meetings. So I open it up for discussion um, to, to the board. Yeah, Bill. I'm ready. I got brand new shirts. <laughs> uh, I'll wear pants. Um, I'm ready. Uh, I think it's essential for us to meet in person. I think it's essential for us to see residents in person that uh, have concerns. Zoom is great. It's worked out great, thankfully. I don't know what we'd have done 15 years ago, um, but we really need to be in person. Um, CDC is, has uh, said we can be three feet apart. Um, people that come in can be three feet apart. Our elections are over. Our staff is back from international travel. Um, I see no reason not to. And I'll listen to any opposition, but uh, I'm open to a hybrid version too for those that need to stay home or are afraid to come in. I, I fully respect that. And I think as a board, we should, um, but I really think we need to be in person. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And Bill has spoken to me and with me about this um, a couple of times. And um, one of the things we'd also like to discuss with the board is their idea about what do we do if we have too many people wanting to appear that we can't accommodate everybody three feet apart and how do we maybe make a registration process or some sort of hybrid situation. So I'd appreciate comments from board members on that as well and staff. So. Tashidra, Abby, where um, are you? I'm right here. Um, I support coming back and meeting um, in person. I think um, it, it just makes it easier to meet but I also think if the rest of the village is slowly opening up and doing things face to face I think um, the precedent has been set that you know we should consider that um, I do think that you know especially with the number of people that wanted to, to appear and just even having the opportunity to come and appear people may show up just because the option is there now um, and I think I would entertain the possibility of um, registering to appear and those who, you know, want to appear after the fact, maybe we can have, um, you know, like a Zoom or satellite option for those individuals so that they can still appear and be heard. Um, I, I do not think that it's a good idea to turn people away. I think that that's a slippery slope that we, we just don't want to climb on right now. Um, but I do fully support um, coming back and meeting in person and trying to get um, our meetings as close to pre-COVID as possible. Um, and I do agree with Bill. I think we need to be careful with the individuals who aren't comfortable coming back. I mean, there is a new strain coming out. And so there's new anxieties circling around, um, even though vaccines have been available and more and more people are getting them. So um, the summation of that is I, I fully support meeting in person, but we need to think about an option for individuals who can't come because of space. 
Thank you. Others, Abby, Jason, Abby. Yeah, I'll just uh, say ditto to what uh, Tacedra just said and um, add that, uh, you know, f f following um, Dane County Public Health, uh, whatever parameters they have set up, I, I guess the big one, biggest one to me is, is masks. Um, hopefully sometime soon that won't be needed, but um, sounds like it still is. And uh, I do appreciate at least, I, I will probably be coming in person, but I know like, you know, if uh, my kids are sick or, or I'm showing symptoms, I know it's wise to just stay home and that'd be nice to have that option of still participating in a meeting um, or just the logistics of being a parent in general. Um, not that I would use it that often. My husband's very good about getting home in time, but those weird times where he doesn't, that there's, it's nice to have that option of still being able to connect with the meetings, so. Thank you. So you're saying I'm hearing a hybrid kind of a situation. So in person when we can and having the option, should we need it of Zooming? Mm -hmm. Okay. Jason? Sure. It's time to get back. Um, now, I will say we have enjoyed more appearances in front of this body since we have gone virtual than we have in the history of the board. Yeah. So this is a way to connect with our public. Let's not lose that. Um, so if people are willing to appear remotely rather than in person, or they can't get to a meeting or something, I think that should be an option for them because it's always great to hear from the public. Um, as far as how to get back in person and, and how much and maintain a hybrid, I don't have a horse in the race anymore, um, but I think it is definitely time to, to, to start looking to getting back around the table, meeting with everybody and, and you know, just the proximity deal is, is real as far as, you know, maintaining uh, a bit of camaraderie and, and decorum with, with the group uh, would I'm sure be served well in person. Thank you, thank you. Um, staff have any comments they wanna add? Colleen, I'm sorry, I missed you. That's all right. I am in favor of going back in person too, largely because, you know, Philly Hall is going to open up. Um, and I, I agree with the uh, ability to make appearances via Zoom and go hybrid. Okay. Good. Good. So any, any staff comments? Otherwise, I think what I would like us to do is to um, take some action and to also set a date. Are we talking about the next meeting or the first meeting in May? Sure. I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, set the uh, next meeting, April 20th, in person with a, high, with a hybrid option. Okay, Bill has made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Was that Tashidra? Yes, it was. Okay, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Yes. Yes. Jason. Yes. Jason. Yes. I'm looking at Lou, your little box. Are we ready? Can well, we check back, or is it going to take a couple of weeks to to figure out who's doing what, where, and and whatnot? With the hybrid option, I think it could work. Um, we don't have room in the room for people to sit three feet apart. I'm not aware what the regulations are with that, but we don't have the room to sit three feet apart and have everybody on camera inside the room. So we will have to look at that. It would be great if there'd be people who are willing to be in a hybrid, you know, for a little while while we kind of transition as we can get closer together. Um, but, uh, I think we can make it work for the most part. Zoom will continue. The board voted for that with our um, pushing our meetings online to be recorded online. So Zoom will be there into the future. So, so maybe as part of our motion, we could ask um, staff to work on a plan for us to return and to create a 
a hybrid situation and to find a way to safely have appearances. Would you agree to that, Bill and and Tay? Nope. Yes. Okay. So with that addition, is there any other discussion? If not, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. And Bill, I'll expect to see a new shirt every meeting. I got a whole bunch of them. Okay, that's good. All right, we're gonna keep moving now. There is no new business and we'll move to presentation of ordinances. Ordinance 2021-005, an ordinance incorporating the provisions of section 106.50 of the Wisconsin statutes into the DeForest Municipal Code. Michelle. Yes, this is, uh, I had a brief memo in the packet, but this along with three of the resolutions that you're going to consider tonight were discussed in a PowerPoint presentation at our last meeting um, about the community development block grant funds that we're um, looking to get from the state of Wisconsin and, um, or through the state of Wisconsin, they are HUD funding. And so as such, um, being HUD funding grants, there are some um, ordinances and resolutions we must pass. And so this first one is that about um, fair housing. And so that is something that is really, um, it, it's just incorporating provisions of um, the Wisconsin statutes into um, the municipal code. So it's not extra, I would say, and Al can correct me if I'm wrong, it's not extraordinary, if that's a, a correct <laughs> comment. Extraordinary in what sense? Well, it's, it's not, it's, it's not um, requiring us to do anything other than what the state would require us to do. Correct. And that's at the first receiving fundings, I'm sorry, yes. Okay, Bill? Just a question for Michelle. We've heard all the positives about joining this consort consortium. Mm -hmm. Are there are there any negatives? You know, I I don't think so. And you know, when we talked about this compares the Dane County Urban County Consortium. We talked about the pros and cons of doing that. And so I think what the board had decided to do was kind of go this direction and, and see if the state um, would be a better, the Department of Administration would be maybe a different way about going about these funds. And so there's um, nothing, I don't think that's a that's a, um, a miss about it. There's, um, we were, if we get the grants funding, we'll, we'll have to accept that grant funding anyway. Um, so it'll be, um, there'll be things before you but this is just things we have to pass to even be allowed to apply. Right. Thanks. Yeah. I would okay. make a motion to approve. A second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And that was Colleen and Bill. Lou has asked us to identify ourselves when we're making motions because it's not always easy for her to catch who said what. So okay. I appreciate that. All right, 9.2, ordinance 2021-006, an ordinance creating section 3.118 of the DeForest Municipal Code to authorize the operation of certain motorized vehicles on public trails. And I'd like to begin with Al. To check to make sure I'm unmuted. Um, in preparing for the meeting tonight, I did find a couple of minor typos in the ordinance. Um, in section three, there's a reference to section 16.02 sub 2B that should actually be 1601 2B. And then uh, in section four, the reference to 3.118A should be 3.1181A. So I'd ask that the uh, motion to approve include those corrections. I have sent the revised version to the land for the, for the final version, but you haven't seen it at this point. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so is that Chief going to present this? Yeah, I can talk to it and um, Judd may as well. Um, it could maybe add some context as well. So good evening. Um, some time ago, Judd and Greg had been receiving inquiries from uh, citizens concerned about some of the vehicles on the uh, on the, uh, the nature paths throughout the village trail system. Uh, we had found that we really didn't have a lot to quantify what could and what could not be allowed on the trails. So working together, we uh, consulted with uh, Al and came up with the ordinance that you have before you tonight. I've seen the and I've listened to the feedback from residents that have appeared earlier, read their um, uh, their statements that were submitted in either support or against. Um, and our, again, our goal with this is to really ensure that um, we identify what's permissible on the trail system in case there was an issue um, down the road that we would be able to address it as backed up by an ordinance. This was taken to public safety. I believe um, it passed on a 5-1 vote. Uh, I think we had a pretty lengthy discussion, if I recall, uh, from that as well. So that's kind of the background for why this appears before you this evening and what the uh, purpose of the ordinance would be. Thank you. Um, two things I would ask, um, if there are questions for chief, I would also ask, Bill asked me about um, the minutes from the pu public safety meeting and I didn't find them. So can you, when they're available, send them to Bill? I will, we meet uh, next week. They're just not approved yet. So we will get those out as soon as they get approved. Okay. Jane, I've been pretty, uh, I talked to chief today and got pretty much the gist of it, but uh, um, I'm, I'm satisfied with okay. talking to the chief. Good. Thank you. Just want to make sure you got what you needed. All right. Are there other questions for Chief on this? I had a question, Chief. Um, you said it was five to one without the minutes being available. Can you just briefly describe what the opposition was in, in regards to this ordinance? I don't, the person ever expressed a purpose for the opposition. I don't recall it being, I don't recall their exact objection. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Bill? Yeah, uh, Chief, I, I forgot to ask you this. As the ordinance is written, will it apply 10 miles an hour to bikes too? Good question. Uh, Al is shaking his head no, so I'm going to defer to him. It would only apply to the motorized vehicles. So we'll still have the $2,500 carbon fiber bikes being able to zip through and I'm more worried about those guys than elect, you know, 65 year old person on an electric bike, but um, I'm, 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 I'm okay with that, I guess. Okay. Uh, Judd, you're going to have to answer this for me. Hang on. I got to step away. Okay. Um, I, I certainly hear what you're saying, Bill. Um, I walk that trail often, regularly. Um, I've seen people zipping through on regular bikes at a high rate of speed. Um, we certainly can um, talk to them about that, but I mean, if there's an incident that they're causing, there there's a liability for them, that person driving recklessly. Um, I assume Al might be able to correct me, but there's laws on the books that apply to that from a civil standpoint that somebody could go after somebody for uh, reckless endangerment or other opportunities. So, yeah, I, I mean, certainly somebody could sue somebody civilly for injuries caused by them running another person down on their bikes. Um, frankly, I wasn't aware that there were problems with the existing use of the trails um, other than the potential for motorized vehicles. So, it, it, we certainly could put a, um, a, a speed limit. On all users, um, you'd have to decide whether you want that to be bicycles, skateboards, um, runners, um, but any of those that you think should be regulated certainly can be. That leads to though an enforcement question. How do we enforce that? Um, right. How do we measure that on a bicycle? Um, are the police officers spending their time out there? I mean, it's a, we can, I think we can suggest that they only go so fast, but 
um, you know, if there's somebody who is uh, certainly violating or, or going beyond what seems reasonable, if it's a conversation that could be had with somebody. Okay. Abby. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with the ordinance, how it's written, um, the exceptions made to the motorized vehicle rule. I uh, just, just a kind of side question um, with, if this ordinance goes into effect, hoverboards are not allowed then? Cause I remember Jan, Stefan Hagen Hahn mentioning those. Would those not be allowed on the trail? J Judd, do you know? Stand by, I need to pull up the ordinance to read it again. It's been a while since I read through it. Um, I'm I sure don't know how I... a hoverboard works. Can somebody tell me, is that a motorized vehicle? It's electric. Yeah. There, uh, I saw kids this afternoon as I was walking to, to my vaccine, they're on a motorized skateboard. Basically it's a platform and it's just, it just uh, goes on uh, down. But I think, um, yeah, it's included in the definition, so it would be prohibited unless one of the exceptions applies, which they don't. Right. So Thanks maybe so. we need. So pictures. I'd ask, why not? Why not alone? Yeah. They're no more dangerous than a carbon fiber bike going for top speed on a downhill. I mean, if anybody's reckless on these trails, I think there's plenty of stuff we can throw at them if they're apprehended. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I think I think Jan's point was that um, young children on hoverboards are often not trained in driving techniques or safety. Um, which I'd which argue was... the same about thirty-year-old adults on a bike. I, yeah. I would accept your argument, having almost been run off the trail. I agree. I, is there anything that specifically prevents hoverboards now? No. This ordinance would prohibit them, but right now there's no prohibition. Okay. Are we indicating we want to add up? or do we want to approve the ordinance as it is and then look at other vehicles as we go forward? Jason? Obviously we're, we're naming specific types of motorized vehicles. So I would say just add hoverboards to the list. Okay, Colleen, did you have your hand up? I don't, what I don't want to do is create exclusions through inclusion. Okay. Bill? Yeah, this is one of those issues where, you know, future trustees ask, how much time do you spend? I spent a lot of time on this talking to people. Um, there's a lot of pros and cons. And at first I'll admit I was against it, but, um, I want to see people get use out of the trail and coexist. Um, I think I would include anything, but it just can't move faster than 10 miles an hour, hour excuse me, whether you're on an e-bike or a scooter or Barbie car or whatever. It, the trails are meant not as a, a, a racetrack, but as for all to enjoy. I think that would pretty much encompass anything. Um, I, I talked to the chief on how you, how would you enforce that? We don't have a portable radar gun. We're not going to chase people down in the golf cart. Um, it's going to have to kind of be self, self, uh, policed. But if we had it at 10 miles an hour, it, 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 it would send a message that we don't want the person thinking that they can fly through there at 25 miles an hour. What's going to happen to them? Not much, but it's just hopefully in the back of their mind. Um, and electric bikes, you know, so 
somebody wrote that I, I go 12 miles an hour. That, that's no big deal. I mean, two miles an hour over 10 is no big deal. We're talking somebody whipping through at 25. and But I'd like to see it total 10 mile an hour on the trail, no matter what you're driving. I don't have a problem with hoverboards. Uh, and there's going to be new technology coming in, and we'll have to deal with this. But as I talked with the chief today, um, I don't want him to have to deal with problems out there because then he's going to have to take staff away from real problems. But we can change it. If there is a problem, say in six months, eight months, two years, we can come back and change it. And I'm, I'm happy with that. And I would support uh, allowing this to happen but if we have problems boy it's not going to be a hammer that comes down it's going to be a sledgehammer but let's let's see what we can do we have a great uh trail system that brings people in and for business or residents i think it's the greatest thing but uh i'm willing to give it a try thank you thank you so do we, are we, we have a proposal to add um, hoverboard to the list. Do we want to do that? I'm going to ask if it's a friendly. There was never a motion yet. I thought we had. There's no motion. No. Is, can I ask a, is hoverboard a brand name? Or is, is, are you envisioning it an electric scooter? Pauline? I'm just Googling here while you're talking. Um, apparently the world's fastest hoverboard is only capable of a top speed of 10 miles an hour and the average is six to eight. So personally, I think they look really dangerous, but I'm an old lady. So we might as well put them in, let them go. I don't think we should, you know, the whole point was to get us, as the chief mentioned, to, to get this down so we have something quantifiable. So let's deal with the hoverboard issue tonight. And if that's their speed, they're no worse than a bike. So let them go. Yeah. Okay. So do I have a motion? I'll make a motion, Bill, to approve with the ordinance changes. Um, specified by attorney Reuter and to change uh, the speed limit to 10 miles an hour for all vehicles on the trail. And are all you vehicles are all motorized vehicles? All vehicles. Are you including hoverboard in that motion or not? Oh, and, and including hoverboards and uh, well, I guess we can't we can add stuff as it comes on, technology comes on, but I'll include hoverboards. All right. We have a motion that includes the corrections, 10 mile an hour speed limit and hoverboards. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a second. Colleen, Colleen sorry. I'm sorry? Just saying it's Colleen seconding. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Abby. Um, I just had a question uh, kind of related to this. Uh, over the last few months, uh, I've heard from residents concerned about some people riding on bikes and either not understanding or not using proper etiquette, you know, warning people that they're going to, warning pedestrians that they're going to pass and, and things like that and some close calls. And I uh, was wondering if there's been any discussion about signage regarding to etiquette on the trail, specifically, you know, those entry points on the trail, because people honestly might not know the etiquette, and especially kids, that might be a good teaching tool. Okay, good point. Um, I don't know what the signs say. I guess I, Jason? Um, believe it or not, I'm going to agree with Abby on the signage. I think that some simple notices that people should not be idiots out there and alert people as they're passing and whatnot and, you know, just the basic rules of the road, I think, are missed. Now, on the actual motion, um, 
I would prefer to address this as motorized vehicles. I don't think the solution to a perceived problem is additional regulation. Um, if somebody can hit 15 on a downhill so they can get up the next uphill, power to them. Um, it's rough, especially an old fat guy like me. Um, so I, I would love to see this motion restated as it only addresses motorized vehicles on public trails, non-combustion even motorized vehicles. Okay. We have a suggestion for a change, Bill. Uh, I'd like to see my motion stand on its own, but okay. I would uh, look at revoting if it doesn't. So I'll offer that change as a motion. All right, here we go. We have um, a motion by Jason to change the um, the language to say motorized vehicle, right? All motorized the vehicles? The change is to address motorized vehicles to the speed limit of 10 miles an hour. Okay. Rather so, than all. So you're saying not bikes, not... As originally stated. Okay. Motorized vehicles. And I'd even go, for, go so far as say non-combustion because I don't want to see combustion skateboards showing up on these things too. Well, you guys know about things I don't. Um, okay, Jason has a, a motion. Is there a second to his motion? Abby? Abby says second. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Now this is where it gets a little dicey. We vote on Jason's motion and then we go back to Bill and, and Colleen's, right? Well, discussion on this first. Yep, I'm getting there. Okay. Sorry. All right. Is there any discussion on this motion? No discussion. With that, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. No. No. We have uh three two right one two three four two four two what's, what's your vote president wolfman i voted for it so and i had bill and to say no is that correct no, no. that was colleen to said okay. i thank you Okay, so the motion carries. Um, so now we're dealing with an ordinance that says um, changes a little bit and we need to look at either a new motion or, or help me out here. We go back to Bill's motion. Oh, sorry, I was, I was working on the ordinance trying to figure out where to fit all this in. If Jason's amendment. Jason had the amendment to change it to uh, just apply the 10 mile an hour speed limit just applies to the motorized vehicles that is part of this amendment. Now it's, so now you have the amendment or you have the approval of uh, the motion that Bill made inserting, uh, removing his part about it, applying to all vehicles and applying just to motorized vehicles. Okay. So it's back to the original written language with the addition of Whatever skateboard, hoverboard stuff. As I've said, it takes a village to run a meeting. Um, I'm sorry, say that we're back to what are we voting on now? It says no, what? We're going back to the motion to approve the ordinance, but now with the language of motorized vehicles as in the, the motion that just passed. But the speed limit. So okay. So we're all confused. So the um, speed limit applies only to the motorized vehicles that is part of this amendment or part of this ordinance. And um, it adds in the ability to also include hoverboards. That's the motion that you would be voting on. Correct. Okay. So I hate to be stupid here, but 
So if you're riding a regular old bike with no motor or electric anything, you can go however fast you want. Yep. Best as your legs will take you. <laughs> I won't go very fast. No, I wouldn't be going very fast. I'd be on that electric bike. But some of those clowns can really fly. Yep. Yep. Or pass that. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm ready to vote. The, the um, sorry. To make that change in the ordinance, the only thing that would have to be done is in section two, under subsection two B, with the exceptions. It reads: the prohibition paragraph A shall not apply to motorized scooters, electric bicycles. Add the words, comma, hoverboards, comma, and you got that change. Okay. Okay. All right. Are we all clear on what we're voting on now? Crystal. Okay. So with that, um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And if you can figure all that out, Lou. <laughs> yeah, I'll work on it tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Um, 9.3, Ordinance 2021-007, an ordinance to rezone from the OR Office and Research District to the M2 General Industrial District, approximately 3.8 acres of parcel number 0910-332-9025-1 and from the OR District to the C1 Conservancy District, the Northern 1.2 acres of parcel number 0910-332-9620-1 located north of Bear Tree Parkway and west of Peterson Crossing Boulevard in the village of DeForest, Dane County, Wisconsin. Brandy. That was a mouthful. <laughs> it was, and we may need a map. <laughs> um, I can share my screen real quick, if that's okay. Just, it uh, would there, be was lovely. A, there was a, let's see here. There was just a little description map in the uh, packet. Let's make sure you guys can see my screen. Yes. Yep. Okay. So this was included uh, in the packet. So the area, so Reardon Road here, mm -hmm. Peterson Crossing, Bear Tree Parkway, the new Hooper um, corporate office and stuff is down here, southeast kind of corner down in that area. The area that we're talking about for rezoning is this area that is in yellow. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, for a request for approval of CSM. The CSM area is all the area that is surrounded with the red. So just so you're kind of familiar with the two items that we're talking about. Um, currently this lot here is already zoned uh, M2. All of these surrounding lots here are either AB, uh, which is an agriculture business, uh, or M2 uh, as well. This parcel right here is the parcel that um, the request for the rezone is, is from office research to M2. Um, the entire site is to enable uh, Hooper Corporation to operate their fleet operations center out of here. Uh, they're going to have an office um, kind of workshop building here and then maintenance shop in the existing shop that's up here on the top. So so uh, what we're looking for tonight is action on the rezoning of this parcel to uh, M2 industrial from the OR. And then the next item on the agenda will address an approval for a CSM for all of these areas in here. Thank you, Brandy. Are there questions for Brandy? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve. Abby, motion to approve. Oh, thank you, Abby. Is there a second? Bill second. Bill second. Um, 
Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. 9.4, Ordinance 2021-008, an ordinance approving a certified survey map, redividing into two lots and one out lot, 11.29 acres, consisting of current parcels um, 0910-332-8851-1 and um, 0910-332-9025-1 and 0910-332-9620-1 between Reardon Road and Bear Tree Parkway and west of Peterson Crossing Boulevard in the village of DeForest, Dane County, Wisconsin. Jason, Take it away. What, Jason? Move for approval. We have, a motion, we have a motion to approve and a second by Bill. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to resolutions. Resolution 2021-027, a resolution authorizing the village president and village clerk to execute a contract with US Cellular, amending a lease agreement for space on Token Creek Water Tower. Judd? Any so questions this on the board on this? I'm sorry. Are there any questions from the board members on this? We talked about this in closed session at the uh, end of the committee of the whole meeting. No, no question here. Oh, we're good. I have a motion. A motion to approve, Bill. We have a Second motion. By Colleen. Second by Colleen. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. A resolution extending the emergency orders issued by resolution 2021-003. This is a discussion for the village board. Um, I guess the question is, do we need to or want to extend the emergency order? Um, do we feel the pandemic is requiring that and or do we need it for purposes of um, keeping anything open or closed? I would ask Al for guidance on on this matter. Yeah, the the um, resolutions that would be extended by this are essentially giving the chief and Steve the authority to make administrative decisions um, resulting from pandemic concerns. So um, that could be anything from you know uh, sending employees home, letting them work from home to uh, adjusting shifts and things like that, to in some cases spending money to buy PPE and that type of thing. Um, so those orders have been in effect since I think May of last year. Um, and Steve could comment on how often they've been used for the chief could, um, but it's basically uh, giving them the ability to be prepared with the authority they might need if there's suddenly a breakout in, uh, in cases in the area. Okay, thank you. Um, I would open it for discussion and I'd also ask if we do do this, how long would it be useful it, to extend it? And I would ask Steve or Chief to suggest that. Yeah, What's the impact well, if it goes away? I, we probably would have to reach out to uh, the president to ask for an executive order and then have it be uh, acted on by the board when convenient or as soon as possible. I, it's hard for me to say if we've done a whole lot as far as utilizing this authority. Uh, I think we've been practicing common sense and following the in county rules. Um, so, but as we've been in this so long, it's hard to say. Uh, and again, it's not staff asking for this authority. It is the board directing us to act accordingly. I just want to make that very clear. This yeah. is you telling us what to do. Yep. Yep. And that's that's valid. And I don't know how long. I really don't. Okay. If this flares up again, you know, 
Um, you can also rescind it at the next meeting if things look better, I would think. Sure. Yes. Chief, well, I might say Chief, Chief has an emergency right now he's dealing with, so just to hear where he's, he's stepped away. Okay. I would suggest that um, perhaps because of some of the new outbreaks that have occurred in, in daycare and um, the B117 variant that seems to be coming through that maybe we extend the order um, through the next quarter. So this is sort of the beginning of April and let's go, you know, April, May, June, and then reconsider it at that point. But I would ask if others are okay with that. Bill? I completely. So if we're under emergency, we're not going to have a 4th of July then? We can't plan for that? No. This has nothing to do with that. Well, no. it's just we're under emergency. So yeah, and I realize it doesn't, but it's in the whole big picture. You know. No, I it just allows staff to do some things to right. like Steve. Yeah, and I don't know. The fourth of July may be a separate topic because that is a chamber event. And I don't know yeah. whether the board I think it was about funding last year and maybe the special permit, but um uh, we don't really know where they're going yet either. At least I don't. Okay. I'll just be consistent in my vote. That's all I can say. Thank you. Colleen, you said something and I didn't hear you. I agree completely with what you said in light of variants and uh, whatnot, but yeah, let's go for another quarter. Okay. Uh, Lou? Can I just recommend we pick a date maybe of June 2nd? The first meeting in June is June 1st, so we act sure. on it again June 1st if it hasn't been rescinded before then. Okay. Makes sense. I'm fine with that. All right. I would entertain a motion then. To I will make a motion to approve extending our orders and, and we'll take it up again June 2nd. Thank you. I'll, I'll second that. To Shidra second. To Shidra, yes. All right. Any further discussion? Yep. Jason. So uh, you have a third of your board being transferred, transitioned next meeting. I would just ask we extend it to then and take it up with your new body. They may have some differing thoughts or opinions. Thank you. Just, just a suggestion. Thank you. Any other comments? We have a motion and a second. I would, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Roll call. Certainly. Uh, Jason. Nay. Bill. Nay. Abby. Aye. Colleen. Aye. Tashidra. Aye. Jane. Aye. Or two. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item. Um, 10.3 resolution 2021-029 resolution authorizing participation in the Southern housing region for the purpose of participating in the Wisconsin community development block grant housing program. Michelle. Sure, this again is one of those resolutions that um, we're talking about related to CDBG that we need to pass. And this one specifically um, has us becoming, um, or asking to become a member of the Southern Housing Region with the um, counties that are listed there um, on the resolution. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second by Bill. Thank you, Colleen and Bill. Any further discussion? Abby? I just wanted to thank Michelle for all her work with uh, pursuing this and also just in general, I think you've been pretty busy. So <laughs> thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank you. We all, we, we all should be recognizing yeah. her. She has been working very hard doing two jobs. So thank you. Good job, Michelle. Thanks. <laughs> all right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 
Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. All right. Moving on. Rolling. Yeah. Um, 10.4, resolution 2021-030, a resolution adopting a policy to prohibit the use of excessive force and to enforce applicable state and local laws prohibiting physically barring entrances, exits, and exits for nonviolent civil rights demonstrations. Okay, Michelle, you're on. <laughs> this one and the next one, the same, they are the same thing. Two more, two more of these policies that we need to um, adopt to apply for the CDBG grants. And um, we have, I think Al has talked to the chief about this one just to make sure everything's consistent. And I think we can, I, I've received information that he's comfortable. Motion to approve by Colleen. Motion. By Colleen. Oh, is I'll second, Bill. Second by Bill. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying. I do. I do. Oh, Jason, I'm Trust sorry. I didn't see your hand. Camera. I won't be forgotten tonight. Sorry. Got lots. Um, help me understand a resolution that outlines a policy. This is pretty squishy. It's a policy mm -hmm. guideline. There's no mm -hmm. teeth. It's, I mean, it's. It's wokeism at its finest, but I mean, this is our new world. Um, tell me more, help me understand. I'm not understanding the question or I'd be glad to. Suppose this is violated. How yeah. would this be enforced? It would be very difficult. Okay. Yet a requirement for the state to get community funding because it is now the responsibility of the housing authority to control police actions. Well, it's actually a federal requirement. Um, it's, it doesn't really add much to the extensive uh, uh, excessive force policy that the police department is required by state law to have. It actually is much more vague and, and generic, um, but it is a requirement of participating in federal grant programs. Thank you. Okay. Since 1974. Are there other questions or comments, Bill? I'll just help Jason out. I, I talked to the chief this afternoon about this at length. And yeah, it is. It's 1974 wokeness. If you remember 1974, um, it's, I asked at what point does non-violent become violent and of course there's a lot of criteria but i'm pretty i'm pretty satisfied it's just it's just language and uh we have an excessive force policy already so it's kind of a non-issue okay. depends on your if lens that, thank you yeah if, if that helps but you know i'm satisfied thank you bill any other comments or questions? Don't want to miss hands. So if not, do we have a motion on the floor? We do. Yes, we do. We do. Um, so all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Yeah. Motion carries. All right. And I We're just gonna... have Jason as a no there. Hope so. Thank you. All right, and the next one, um, 10.5, resolution 2021-031, a resolution creating the residential anti-displacement and relocation assistance plan in accordance with the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended and HUD regulations at 24 CFR 42.325 as applicable for CDBG projects. Michelle. You, uh, this is basically the saying, and, and Al, um, you can correct me if that's uh, uh, what you wish to do, but um, as far as I understand it, this basically, if you are a recipient of the CDBG grants and it relates to any displacement of um, residents, then you need to um, have a plan to not displace them, correct? 
That is that is correct. And in terms of uh, relocation assistance that you have to provide, you have to do that under state law whenever you do a public project that displaces people. Um, federal law has a couple of additional requirements, but if you're using federal money, you have to comply with those federal requirements. Right. Thank you. Abby, motion to approve. We have a motion by Abby. Do we have a second? I'll second, second Bill. We have a second by Bill. Any further discussion? Jason. Thank you. As amended, how has this thing been amended and how recently? Act of 74 as amended, amended. There have probably been a hundred uh, amendments and I can't tell you what was amended. The bill itself is kind of extensive and I have not studied the, the history of it. So I can't answer that. Okay. Thanks. It basically says that you will apply whatever the current version of that law is. So, no, we are, oh, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, we're currently obligated to do that with our public housing project with HUD funding that has HUD funding. I mean, it is something we're complying with in, in receipt of those funds too. Michelle, I interrupted you. No, I interrupted you. That was fine. No, no comments, no further okay. comments. All right, we had a motion and a second. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries. All right, moving forward. 10.6, a resolution authorizing the village president and clerk to sign a connection charge deed notice with bullish investments. Judd. Uh, pretty straightforward uh, that I didn't include a memo because I think the resolution kind of says it all. Um, this is our um, bullish investments just wants to defer that MMSD payment. We're coming to you to get Approval to have Jane um, sign that um, deferral. Okay. Motion Questions? By Jason. Motion by Jason. Is there a second? Second by Colleen. Second by Colleen. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Um, resolution 2021-034, a resolution approving a memorandum of agreement between the village and the Community Development Authority. Michelle. Sure, this resolution is um, suggested to you or requested to you uh, by the CDA who voted on March 29th to um, seek approval from the village to continue to um, utilize village staff and operations for uh, its its organization with the um, in, in a broad sense at this point while it's evaluating needs and things um, that there would be a um, cost for the village per month and a cost for the um, public housing per month of 2000, so a thousand each. Um, and that would be um, on or before June 30th of 2021. They, um, we want to enter into a, or ask you to enter into a more comprehensive agreement, but right now we wanted to have something um, so that you were aware of, of the work that was being provided and the compensation that, that we are suggesting. Um, and, and I might add that, um, you know, the, the CDA the, on the housing side of things is, is securing some finance bookkeeping support as well as Michelle's direction. And Steve has been participating on a, on a lot of review and assessment of the needs um, of those projects. So there is time being put in. Um, we don't know after June what we're going to need, but we know we're gonna need more services where we reevaluate our the budgets at that point and be able to negotiate a real kind of price. Um, but for now, we're just, we're, we feel it's important that the CDA pay for it, the services that they're getting. So I would make a motion to approve by Colleen. Thank you, Colleen. Is there a second? Second, Jason. 
We have a second by Jason. Any further discussion? Just a question. Yeah, Abby. Um, just to, so that this is, would, would most of the help or assistance be related to like, you know, the financials of the CDA housing part of it? Okay. And in the management work that, that Michelle has been doing and, and Steve has been overseeing the, the work with the um, uh, accounting firms and that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully in support of this. I think this is a great idea. Um, I think uh, it, it allows for more checks and balances with you know handling the financials because that was one of the hard, hard things when it was previously the housing authority. It was such a small organization. And uh, there, yeah, so I, I really appreciate that because overseeing the financials is so important. Um, I think this is a good, uh, memorandum to see us through until there's a more permanent agreement. Thank you. Jason? Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm thinking as a historian, looking back on our old exhibits and resolutions over time, the language about the CDA's housing the director has retired really doesn't need to be in here. I mean, we're just asking, the CDA is asking the village to assist with these roles. I don't know that the, the status or, or history of anything, it just, it's nitpicky. It's not going to be a game changer for me, but if we can kind of just get rid of that language, I'd be much happier. Okay. And I'll second that. Okay. Um, I take that as a friendly amendment. Okay. And does our seconder accept it? Colleen made the motion and Jason was the seconder. Okay. So Colleen, do you accept that? Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll remove that language. Uh, Steve? I suppose then the CDA has to meet again to accept that change in the MOU, MOA. Withdrawn. So, so this wouldn't take effect until they meet again. Withdrawn. Withdrawn. Pass it. It's fine. Now yep. withdraw my motion. Yeah. All right. So we've withdrawn removal of that language. Um, so we have a motion. <laughs> yes, to approve. Motion to approve as written. Yep. All right. Yep. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. I see tired faces around the Zoom meeting, so. Yeah, we're getting there, guys. We're Tempo. getting Robert's rule of order tonight. <laughs> uh, resolution 2021-035, a resolution authorizing the Director of Public Services to submit an application to the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources for financial aid to enable completion of the Western Green East Trail segment. I have to think about where that is, but Judd's going to tell us. So oh, that's basically the section from Main Street down to, um, I guess, uh, Old Indian Trail, right? So there's that section there. We've got last year we went out and got a grant award for the bridge portion. Now we're hoping to get the remainder. I know uh, Dawn is, uh, first Clemens has asked for this uh, repeatedly, so she's probably pretty excited. Uh, it should be in hopes of not jinxing myself um, that uh, this should be a pretty easy no-brainer for us. <coughs> to get the ask for uh, additional funding in the grant application so i'll make a motion to approve is there a second second jason second by jason motion by bill <clears throat> any further discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed same sign motion carries resolution 2021-036, resolution authorizing the Director of Public Services to sell lumber from village parks and other property. Judd. Lumber. So as you're aware, we uh, have a good urban forestry program. We were awarded an innovation award from the DNR. Um, we have uh, recently had some lumber uh, logs removed uh, from Rigstead Park down um, by uh, the Pinecone restaurant, there were black walnut. And if we were to get those um, 
milled and and put into use, they wouldn't really work with the uh, architecture plans that we have, right? It, was the, the, it would darken up too much compared to what we're using other lumber for. Uh, mm -hmm. But we don't want to see that go to waste and others may find a use for it for building whatever it may be. So we're looking to, whenever we come across um, lumber that is good, but we don't have a use for rather than just mulching it or making it firewood, we prefer to sell it to somebody who's willing to give us a, a fair and reasonable price for that. Um, and then any funds that are done with that, um, as stated in there, go back to um, um, the forestry, urban, uh, forestry. urban forestry fund. Thank yeah. you. Good deal. We have a second motion. by Bill. We have a motion by Colleen, second by Bill. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. That's a great idea. Excellent idea. 10.10 10, resolution 2021-037 resolution accepting the lowest qualified bids and awarding a contract for resurfacing of Seminole Way, Old Indian Trail, and Pocahontas Lane. Judd, Greg? Yep. So we went back out for bid. Uh, got, again, some terrific pricing. Uh, this was a to uh, capture the uh, budgeted amount that we had in our CFP and pull up some additional ones since the uh, pricing is so great and uh, this didn't fail to uh, help us either. Um, they, they, uh, so we're getting um, four more roads done this year that have a PASER rating of uh, four or, or under and it's just slightly over what we had left over in that budgeted amount. And, uh, but Steve has assured me that we can, we'll have some, we have funds left over that we could use to apply that. It was $37,000 over what we had budgeted for the year, but it makes sense to get these, all these roads done. Mm-hmm. I would make a motion to approve that. Colleen made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I'll make a second. Nope. Tashidra seconded. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Resolution 2021-038, a resolution authorizing the village president and clerk to execute a farm lease agreement for land owned by the village in TID number six. Michelle. Oh, thank you. Um, Mr. Wakeman has been uh, a lessor of the lessee, lessee of the lessee. Sorry, thank you all uh, of the um, property for farming for the last few years, and um, would like to do it again this season. Um, this is one of my um, goals: is this 20 acre uh, a lot to to be developed on. So, um, just letting everybody know that <laughs> there is a stipulation in there that if development were to come along, that this would change that. So, here's here's for hoping. But um, yes, so this is a lease from May to I believe November. May to November. Okay. And does Jason, every motion to approve? We have a motion by Jason. Okay. Is there Bill? We have a second by Bill. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Um, communications, um, check register. I don't think there's any questions on that. Um, administrator's report, staff report on public affairs. Steve, Judd. Okay. President's report. I don't have anything in addition. Um, and with that, we will Wait, move. Hey, Jane, quickly. The league did ask for people to help support um, for the public affairs. Um, they're asking for additional funding back to municipalities, local municipalities in the form of shared revenues. And they, they mm -hmm. sent out a call for people to reach out to the finance committee for that. So um, I think that's something that 
we certainly could benefit from uh, having those additional shared revenues restored back to where they once were from the state. Sorry. That came in late this afternoon. I forgot to make a note of it. Okay. All right. Um, so noted and we can, we can look at communicating. I don't think anybody opposes that. So perhaps a letter. Um, there, there are other issues we'd probably want to talk to folks about as well. So um, regarding levy limits and other things. So perhaps a well-constructed letter would be a good thing. Any objections to writing a letter? Thumbs up? No. All right. All right, we're getting tired, I'm sorry. Okay, we're gonna convene into closed session. So Lou, would you take note roll? Yeah, motion. I'll make a motion to move into closed. I have a motion to move into closed. Is there a second? Second by Tisidra. Thank you guys. All okay. right. Okay, roll, we have Jason. Aye. Bill. No. Abby. Aye. Colleen. Aye. Tashidra. Aye. Jane. Aye. All right, I will get you into the room. One second here. Jane, you should declare the motion carried. Motion carries. Thank you, Al. Do those of us who are here at the meeting just stay in the main room waiting until you return? That's correct. Thank you. Jason, I wanna say thank you for your years of service. I'm not gonna be on through the rest of the meeting, but it has been a pleasure working with you for the last uh, 12 plus it, years, so thanks. It has been a pleasure serving by your side. So yes, thank you. And it has been wonderful, Jason. We all appreciate it. I was going to speak to that later, but if not, everyone will be here. We do thank you and, and look forward to continuing to interact with you going forward. We really do appreciate it. You've been wonderful. Thank you very much. And well. likewise, we want to welcome Rebecca. So we're so glad to have you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm looking forward to working with y'all. Thanks. Okay. With that, I'm going to open up the room. Other side. And I'm recording again. All right, here we go. Are we all back in? Okay. Yes. All right, so we are, we, we have the um, resolution coming out of close to on the agreement um, with Capwin related to Meridian Drive. Um, we have a resolution in our packet on that, correct? Right. First item, Jane, is the 2133, which is the CF investments. Okay. Well, let's start with that then. Um, there is a resolution for CF investments. Um, 2021-003 uh, um, that we discussed in close. And I would entertain a motion. Jane? Yeah? Do I have the floor? Yes. I make a motion to postpone a decision till our next meeting of April 20th. We have a, a motion on the floor to postpone. I'll second for discussions, Jason. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Sure. I'll just I'll comment now. Um, I, I I feel pretty strongly that a full board should take this up at a later meeting. Um, I haven't heard of any pending timeline restraints on this. I know the developer is anxious to get going, uh, but this is a, a significant enough decision. I would prefer full board. I know I'm, I'm not going to dodge it. I'm happy to, 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 to vote, uh, but 
given that we know there's going to be some change, um, I'd like the full board to take this up rather than our six person. And I'd second that, what Jason said. All right, we have, we have, a, See, um, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on it? Abby. Um, just that I respect and understand that concern and um, I guess I feel like there, there's a lot of steps to go forward with this development proposal and that um, I feel comfortable personally with voting on it tonight. Uh, if the board chooses to delay it, I respect and understand that as well. Um, and if we do vote tonight, as I said, there's a lot of steps going forward that the future board members will definitely get to weigh in on. Actually, there's no debate on postponing. It's straight up. There, I believe there's no discussion and it's a vote. Uh, oh. Well, Al's checking. I think that's right. I don't think it is, but let me look. Yeah, I didn't think Who are you? Who are you to say that? We're checking. Most We're checking. I Googled it this afternoon, so. Well. But I stayed at the Google holiday. Google's always right. Press last night. It was the Google. <laughs> Which of the 140 interpretations of Robert's rules are we looking at? As a like motion to postpone. Motion to postpone to a certain time. Debatable, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. No. Right. Tenth edition. Nice. And I've got the latest one right here, and it's in there as well. Okay. Well, All right. Carry on. So, that being the case, I'd like to support what Abby says. And um, another notable thing, we, we, um, I think need to, to deal with this matter and um, respect the timelines that are that are out there. So I agree. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Are we ready to vote? Roll All call, those? please. All right. What is the motion again, please? There was a lot of discussion. Tashidra, the motion is to postpone to the next meeting. But kick the can down the road. Thank you. All right, by roll call, Tushidra. Nay. Jason. Aye. Bill. Aye. Abby. Nay. Colleen. Nay. Uh, Jane. Nay. Motion fails to four. Okay. So then I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the resolution. I'd make a motion to approve the resolution. Is there a second? Abby, second. Abby, any further discussion? Yeah, I'll just, I'm voting no, not because I completely dislike the proposal in front of us, just I would uh, obviously encourage full board to vote. Steve, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I certainly want Mark to weigh in on some of the comments uh, that were shared by citizens tonight on comp plan and, and ordinances. Uh, and uh, let staff have a chance also to talk about why we think this is a TIF worthy uh, project. Okay. So Mark, you wanna, you got enough information Mark to kind of share? Yeah, yes, yeah, Steve. I, you know, I, I, you, you will, you or others will comment on the TIF worthiness part. I will yes. comment on the comprehensive plan relationship and ordinance relationship, and I'll do my best to understand what was said earlier. Everyone knows I wasn't at the meeting earlier. I'm sorry for that. Um, the uh, ordinance relationship. Uh, there was discussion, I believe, about whether uh, a traffic impact analysis ought to have been required. Uh, that, that is in the subdivision ordinance, but it's not a requirement. Uh, this is a first response. 
The second response is there have been traffic impact analyses done for conservancy place and development of these lands over the past uh, 20 years, including when an interchange on the interstate was being considered. Uh, and the third uh, uh, response I'll offer is that we uh, did do some traffic analysis as part of the CF investments proposal. It was included in our report to PNZ. Uh, it suggested that the CF investments proposal uh, certainly generated traffic, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but compared to some of the other uses that were, were and are enabled in that area, including uh, retail, commercial services, uh, employment, office research, uh, it uh, generated less traffic than those other uses. The street network in Conservancy Place has been and will be uh, designed to accommodate those other types of uses. Therefore, it's designed to accommodate a lower traffic use of use like CF investments. Uh, that's that's the I guess our response to the comment on traffic impact analysis. Um, with respect to comp plan consistency, uh, the uh, as I understand it, there was a, there were a couple of comments. Uh, one might have been that the, the proposal wasn't consistent with the future land use map within the comprehensive plan. Uh, it's an interesting and complex uh, statement uh, that I'm looking at the map right now, and it is definitely true that this site uh, is identified in the current comprehensive plan for future office research development that was I identified in uh, the 2015 comprehensive plan with respect to the most uh, likely uh, future use at the time based on the preliminary development plan at the time. In 2018, the PDP was expanded to enable or uh, allow mixed use and multifamily development in addition to office research development. We don't have a category, a future land use category that says all of the above. Uh, so the decision uh, at that time was not to amend the comp plan, but rather uh, leave it where it was. Uh, there is also provisions on the future land use map that says the boundaries between these future land use designations may flip, uh, flux a little bit and they're certainly is a residential directly adjacent to it on that, on that map. Um, related to that, there is no zoning change being proposed for this proposal. So a consistency, a legal consistency argument uh, in, in my non-legal opinion doesn't really apply here. Um, uh, the other, as it was explained to me, the other um, comprehensive plan policy that um, some expressed concern about was one that suggested that uh, the village ought to work with uh, developers of places like Heritage Gardens and Conservancy Place to attempt to achieve a greater single family uh, uh, ratio than was previously offered as zone zoning approval. And that is, that is certainly uh, a, a, a policy within the comprehensive plan. It, it was uh, crafted that way with knowledge of the fact that there were zoning approvals and are zoning approvals for those developments that um, enable a considerable, considerable amount of multiple family development. Um, there's no mandate that those uh, developments actually do that. And in fact, a conservancy place uh, even now has uh, uh, around 70 uh, approved single family lots that don't have homes on. Now, some of them don't have improvements to them yet, but there are definitely uh, spots for the single family market to continue to grow and, and flourish. Uh, within there. So in light of that, uh, I'm not sure what the village would do to encourage more. We can't create a market where, you know, market doesn't necessarily exist. So um, that's uh, the response to that. The third thing, I guess, is a broader question of how do we apply the comprehensive plan to developments that have been provided with approvals uh, for many, many years? You know, and the approach the village has taken, uh, which has been you know, some, somewhat deferential to those prior zoning approvals. Um, Conservancy Place, uh, regardless of iteration of the PDP has enabled uh, plus or minus 700 multiple family housing units uh, over the past 20 years. Uh, the number has, may have changed, the locations where those can grow may have changed. They've generally shifted west uh, away from the single family areas, but the number really hasn't. So the question really is, and has been, how strong armed would the village want to be in uh, uh, down, such a down zoning, these areas that have been uh, approved for, uh, uh, for multiple family housing? And 
to date, the village and the mood of the village has not been to be aggressive and try to uh, um, to force uh, a lower density than what has been authorized through you know numerous approvals over the last two decades. Uh, so I I'm happy to try to answer any further questions that board members recall, you know, being raised that I might have missed. Uh, um, but that's that's my response to the, at least what I understand has been raised tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Are there other questions that we want Mark to, or Al to address before we go forward? Colleen? Thank you for Al, um, there's no reason, no legal reason we cannot use TIF out here, correct? That's correct. The only restriction on the use of TIF money to support residential development deals with newly platted subdivisions. Um, this is not a subdivision, it's not platted. Um, th there's also a specific provision in the uh, TIF law that says that you can use TIF money even in single family newly platted residential subdivisions if the density of the units is more than three per acre. So, this, there's no restriction because it's not a newly planted subdivision. And even if there were that restriction, it would be accepted from the restriction because it's dense enough. That's a long way of saying no, there's no restriction. on. There's no restriction on using TEF. What we're doing is for the benefit of the village to make this area something that doesn't end up as some type of auto body repair shop or something along those lines out there because it's so close to the interstate. Yes, we're concerned about citizen concerns, but as one of the other trustees brought up, we have to be concerned that we don't end up with a north to forest and a south to forest and whatever. So for the good of the village, for the good of getting things going out there for, I mean, I know citizens want River Road to be redone for the availability of a place to rent in the village. Uh, I, I'm gonna vote in favor of it. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? Oh, hey, Abby. Abby. <laughs> just uh, I agree with what Colleen just said and uh, I, I wrote out earlier today, like a, a list of pros and cons for this development and the pros uh, for me, looking at the village holistically outweigh the cons by quite a bit, like the, uh, you know, more housing options being available, including a, a very affordable starting condo price in this development. Um, I, the pictures that were provided by CF Investments, it looks very nice. Um, I like the parking underneath that helps uh, increase the amount of green space and also, um, you know, stormwater management and better for the environment. Um, businesses located below, but also that this development in itself will hopefully spur economic growth in DeForest and in particular that part of DeForest. And that's kind of what TIF money is supposed to be for, you know. Um, it's been kind of slow going there in that part of DeForest so far. And I think this will help get things going. I think it's uh, also meets a, a need in our community with workforce housing. I, I remember Michelle said it, I think at the last meeting about how local businesses are just really wanting places for their workers to live, you know, and, and, and being able to get and keep good workers. And that's part of it, that they can live in the community that they work in if, if that's what they wanna do. And then also this uh, apartment complex is, uh, it is a little bit on the bigger side, but I, th uh, I should say the development in general. Um, but I think the location where it's at is, is very good and how it's laid out is very well. It'll be right next to where River Road will be realigned. So I think that's a good location. And it's uh, the condos and townhomes are more closer to the side where, you know, the, where there's already condos and townhomes and then further there's single family homes. So I think there's a nice transition there as well. Um, so uh, 
Yeah, that's where I'm at. Thank you. Are we ready to vote? All right. All those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign? No. Abstain. All right. We have um, four yeses, one no, and an abstention. The motion carries. The agreement is approved. All right, the other item in close that we dealt with was um, the resolution authorizing the president and clerk to execute a highway reservation agreement and a sixth amendment to development agreement with Cap Win 19 LLC. We, we need to vote on that. So um, I would entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. Is there a second? No second. second. Well. We have Jason made the motion. Bill seconded it. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. OK. I would move to asking if there's any other business to come before this board. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank Jason for his many, many years of service. And he thinks that we're going to leave him alone, but he's wrong. Um, so be prepared, Jason. Um, and, and again, we wish you well in, in, in your new endeavors and um, hope that you don't become a stranger. We thank you. Big, big round of applause. Thank you. It's good thank work. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I got about three pages of comments. Oh, good. I, I'll abbreviate them. It's truly been a pleasure and, and I mean, amazing experience. I have seen people come and go through the years. I mean, of all walks of life and I'll still, I'll still contend, you know, our diversity is our strength. We've got a very uh, mixed group of, of, of people and typically there's middle ground to be found. Um, what is it to keep 51% of the people happy 51% of the time you're doing okay. So um, thank you to staff for putting me up with me for all these years. There's been a lot of crazy questions and, and difficult stuff to dig in on uh, and all of you for putting up with me. So I appreciate it. I think the village is a whole lot better now than, than when I came and I'm going to take some credit for that. So um, thanks again. And uh, it's truly been a pleasure and a blessing. So. Thank you. Thank you. We do appreciate it. So would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? Oh, I suppose I'll take that motion. I'd move to adjourn. Thank you. Is there a second? Second by Tashidra. Thank you, Tashidra. We have a motion and a second. And all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We won't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, thank you for all the hours. You worked hard on the election and now you've been here till after 10. So I hope you can sleep in in the morning. Thank See you, you, Jason. Have a beer thank for you. me. Have thank you, night. Jason. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Time for a kegger. Yeah.